Uh, Charity Streams 101, that's how I named it, just to kind of get, get the point across about what I, what I was going to do, right? Um, ajá, entonces estoy diciendo, ¿no? Que eh, yo quise nombrar... Bueno, en, en español siento que no se traduce igual en inglés el one on one, el 101. Bueno, tal vez sí, pero creo que lo, lo he escuchado más en inglés, entonces en español lo nombré como Indra Streams de Caridad, ¿no? Eh, porque es, es una introducción más que nada. Yeah, like, if... And actually, maybe I should have done this. So before I even get into it, like, there's definitely some expectations, right? That, like, I already have from all of you that are, you know, potentially either watching it live or on my YouTube channel, which is that you've, you've already, you're familiar with streaming, right? Like, you've already done some streams. And, uh, you know, you know things like adding overlays and adding alerts. And, you know, you, 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 know, you know how to whether you're using OBS or any other platform to connect to Twitch, right? Like kind of connect all yourself and put yourself on Twitch. You know, you, you, you pretty much know all of the streaming basics, right? And I'm going to have that assumption. Eh, me di cuenta que algo que se me olvidó poner en mi presentación es que va a haber cosas que ya voy a asum asumir de ustedes, ¿no? Por ejemplo, el que ya han streameado, ya conocen cómo poner alertas, ya saben cómo poner este... Overlays, no sé cómo se diga en español, pero lo, lo que yo tengo, ¿no? Que, que tengo como diferentes imágenes y cosas así, ¿no? En mi stream. Y, y todo eso, ¿no? Ya, ya estás familiarizado con hacer streams, que esa va a ser como mi, mi base. That, that's gonna be my base, exactly. Um, ajá, so then, you know, once you have that in place, I think the first question you have to ask yourself is why fundraise, right? I think, like, Especially, you see so many... I don't know if so many, but honestly, I was surprised at how popular it was, at least within the people that I saw, that I kind of started, you know, interacting with. I mean, not everyone that I know of that streams fundraises, but it was like a pleasant surprise that I saw a lot of people fundraising. And I don't think I never really... Well, I did, because... The way I started fundraising was a bit different than other people, and I, I, I don't know. I might talk to that at the end of the video, but that's not really the point. Um, but I, I, I do think that the first thing you have to ask yourself, right, is why fundraise. Um, and I came up with, you know, some bullet points as to why I think I fundraise. And of course, every person has their own opinion as to why they fundraise. But I think these are kind of good, you know. Potential ideas as to, you know, why you might think of fundraising. Uh, so the first one, right, is to support a cause that matters to you. And actually, before I continue, right, like you see the English, the next one is going to be all Spanish. So this is going to be like a longer full English and then I'm going to go to Spanish. Nada más interrumpo rápido en español, ¿no? Que ahorita estoy hablando en inglés, por eso en la parte de abajo, ah, aquí, eh, dice inglés, ¿no? Pero cada presentación tiene su versión en inglés y en español, entonces luego hablaré plenamente en español. Ok, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do the English <laughs> right now. Um, aha, so support the cause that matters to you, right? And I think that's kind of like the more intuitive reason. Um, and I think like, yeah, it, it's, it's such a great way to help and support a cause that you know, that matters to you while you're doing something that you're already familiar with, right? Which is streaming. Hey, Triana, yes, we're doing Spanglish today. Welcome, welcome. Bienvenida. <laughs> uh, how are you doing, Triana? I hope all is well. Or else. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Triana. Yeah, I'm kind of... Uh, you caught us just in the beginning. I'm kind of going currently in English as to reasons to fundraise um enjoying the rain yeah it's been raining here not right now but in the past it has been raining so i i get that well, welcome there and yeah if, if anyone has any questions feel free to interrupt esto también lo voy a decir en español aunque esté en la parte de inglés si tienes cualquier pregunta eh, me puedes interrumpir en el chat no no hay problema i'm actually gonna do the oops excuse me the command there you go the command oh now that i'm home because you know traffic yeah no <laughs> oh i know and then traffic with rain is even worse triana so i totally totally understand um but yes i'll go a bit more on the white fund race uh, 
so yeah you know you support something that matters to you then help people in need right I, and i think like i know for me even though it's not necessarily something like a cause that i relate to or that i experience you still end up helping people that need the help uh, and that that for me brings a lot of satisfaction and you know kind of positivity of the world so i also like just for that reason and kind of related to all of this right and i actually i think this one is more important than people realize but it's the one of raising awareness of important causes right because one of the misconceptions about fundraising is that you know you have to reach your goal or that you have to you know get a lot of money to add value and of course you know there's a reason why ultimately when you fundraise you are asking people to donate their money to a charity but it's definitely much more than that right like a big part of fundraising is also dedicating your stream to an organization or a charity you know or something and ultimately being able to raise awareness of important causes right and and i think that's something that everyone can do regardless of the scale and it actually reminds me of you know many different streaming groups that you know even though the streamers individually might have a small large you know any any community size if we all work together for doing a fundraiser you know it ends up reaching like a big audience almost like you know to some degree it, it actually reminds me of when you do some like type of advocacy or if you go to you know to a protest like you might think like oh if i go on my own like one person going versus not going won't make a difference and that's like that's true like you know like but then if everyone thinks the same thing then that's when it's impactful right so it, it, it's really i don't really think of fundraising as a collective thing even if you do a fundraise on your own you know it, you're there's so many if you're ra if you're fundraising for some sort of organization there's probably a lot of people that are you know giving money and support to this organization one way or another so yeah raising awareness <laughs> <laughs> very important uh as 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 so you know equally important than you know actually g getting money and and reaching your goals and things like that um so that's that and then another thing that honestly i didn't realize how big it was going to be for me like i knew it was going to be big to some degree but not to the degree that it is now which is adding a motivation for streaming, right? I, I, I find a lot of, I shouldn't say I find a lot of, but sometimes there's at least one person that I do know of that reach out to me and ask me like, oh, you know, I sometimes find myself being unmotivated to stream. Like I'm just, you know, doing the same thing of, you know, either, either it doesn't even need to be playing the same game, right? But you almost get into a routine and you might lose motivation if, if you're doing the same thing. And honestly, for me, having some charity streams throughout my, you know, year, throughout each year streaming definitely adds some motivation, right? Because, you know, you kind of have that time in which you play games, chat with the community, play, uh, I don't know, do, do other stuff, right? But, and it depends, right? In my case, I... I showcase indie game so for me you know every day i showcase a different indie game almost always um but then i i don't know that i'm but then you know at some point i have to then plan about the charity stream so it's, it completely changes you know my my engagement with planning streams ahead in advance and it changes you know being creative about the different goals and milestones all which i'll talk in a second and I feel like it adds a lot of different things and excitement and a lot of adrenaline and also happiness about you being able to help an or, or a fundraiser. And ultimately, going back to the main point, right? It does add a motivation to streaming. And I feel like not many people realize that. So, you know, even if, if, even if you don't know about streaming and you're just here because you bumped into this video <laughs> or stream wh wherever you're seeing this right now, and you've been feeling a bit unmotivated about streaming, I think trying, and that's the other thing, right? You can try, and then if you don't like it, or if it's not for you, that's fine. Like, it, it's okay. But it can definitely add a motivation to streaming. Um, 
And then I guess that's related, right? And I kind of talked about it already. That that kind of ties to being outside of your comfort zone, which ultimately helps you grow, helps you be more creative, and that creativity can just be used throughout your entire streaming-related stuff. Um, and of course, right? Uh, all at least in my experience, all of this is my experience. Maybe I should have done like a disclaimer, but I I, I feel like that is intuitive, right? That ultimately. My point of reference is just my experience with charity streaming and fundraising, so uh, it can vary by people, but just, you know, to have a point of view. Fundraisers can be very chaotic and very rewarding, and having streams that are like that can, can really cheer up your mood and can be very much worth it. Okay, we'll go to Spanish. Ahora vamos a hablar en español esta misma parte. Entonces... Hice la pregunta, ¿no? De por qué es valioso recaudar fondos, ¿no? ¿Por qué hacer un stream de caridad? Y obviamente cada persona va a tener diferentes puntos de vista y diferentes razones, pero yo pensé en algunas razones que me resuenan y que creo que algunas, aunque sea algunas de estas razones, te van a resonar cuando estés pensando si quieres hacer streams de caridad, ¿no? Entonces... Bueno, el primer punto es apoyar una causa valiosa para ti, que creo que es el punto pues, más intuitivo, ¿no? Porque normalmente... Por ejemplo, Triana, que está en el chat, eh, la primera vez que Triana hizo un stream de caridad es por Milagros Caninos, ¿no? Que fue una situación eh, donde un centro... No sé si de rescate, creo que sí es de rescate, pero es un centro donde tienen diferentes perritos y gatitos. Eh, eh, la mayoría de, de, los, de las mascotas que tiene son perritos eh, con discapacidad. Refugio, gracias, Trena. Gracias. <risa> Ahorita con mis pangles se me van a olvidar palabras. Sí, gracias, un refugio, ¿no? Eh, y, y Trena tuvo esta necesidad, ¿no? De hacer un stream. Bueno, de, 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 de apoyar, ¿no? Y de, y de conseguir dinero. Y entonces Triana se acercó a mí y a otros eh, amigos nuestros que hacen streams. De oigan, me gustaría apoyar. Y porque para mí Re Milagros Caminos es una organización muy importante. Y, y es lo bonito, ¿no? Que como que alguien empieza con, con una causa valiosa. Y, y como que eh, esa historia como que sí toca, te toca, ¿no? Y... Y bueno, como yo sí tenía hasta cierto punto de experiencia en hacer streams de caridad, dije, Triana, vamos, vamos a hacer un evento. Y la verdad fue muy divertido. O sea, yo creo que... A mí no sé... Bueno, sí te lo he dicho, Triana, pero también lo digo ahorita en este stream, que la verdad... Consegu o sea, conseguimos muchísimo dinero. Ay, sí, ¿verdad? Aparte también, si lo haces en equipo, como que con la gente con la que terminas haciendo estos streams, como que la amistad crece aún más, ¿no? La verdad, sí... Sí puedes tener un apoyo muy bonito con, con la gente que hagas este streams de caridad. Exacto, todos nos lanzamos, to, todos dijimos, no importa si fue nuestro primer stream de caridad. De hecho, creo que casi para todos los streamers que participaron en este, en, en el Miracle Streamers, los, este, los streamers de milagro, ¿no? Porque se llama Milagros Caninos. Para casi todos fue su primer stream y la verdad como que... Ay, sí, fue lo máximo. <risa> Fue lo máximo, en resumen fue lo máximo, pero sí, exacto, Triana, sé, sé que me entiendes. Eh, Triana, mi idea era hacerlo yo y ustedes así, de vamos a hacerlo en raid y yo, ay, yeah, exacto. Pero no, y de hecho esa experiencia como que refleja mucho a todos estos puntos, ¿no? Porque al final... Ah, bueno, y aquí puse gente, pero no, no tiene que ser gente, ¿no? En este caso ayudamos a perritos. La verdad, puedes ayudar a tantas diferentes causas y eso es otra cosa que creo que no nos damos cuenta de la variedad de causas que hay. Yo que eh, hago streams, en, que, hago, que recolecto dinero en todos mis streams, porque el dinero que gano de Twitch lo, lo dono a caridades, como que también me ha invitado a buscar organizaciones a qué donar, ¿no? Y la verdad es... Bueno, es triste, ¿no? Que sí haya muchas organizaciones que necesiten el dinero y el apoyo. Pero también es impresionante la variedad de, de caridades y de organizaciones que hay para, para apoyar. Exacto, es que puedes apoyar gente, comunidades, animales, estudios, escuelas, artes, de todo. Exacto, Triana, exacto. Y, y hay algo que sí eh, lo, lo dije cuando hablé en inglés que es muy importante. Es que creo que uno de, de los errores... Cuando la gente... Bueno, no errores, pero a veces yo sé que algo... Que una de las cosas que 
impide a otras personas hacer streams de caridad es tener miedo a que no van a conseguir eh, el dinero que, que se requiere, ¿no? que no van a conseguir a la meta que, que uno se ponga pero los streams de caridad obviamente una parte es conseguir dinero, pero otra parte igual de importante es crear conciencia de estas causas, ¿no? tú le estás dedicando uno o varios streams a una organización y eso habla mucho, ¿no? De lo que para ti es esa organización. Y al final de cuentas vas a tener comandos que hablen de la organización y tú lo vas a hablar en tu stream y vas a tener videos y vas a tener como muchas, muchos recursos para educar a la gente que esté en tu stream a aprender más de la organización. Y es algo que es más poderoso de lo que normalmente se piensa. ¡Ay, yes! ¡Hi! ¡Oh, Daniel! ¿Cómo estás? ¡Exactly! ¡Exacto! Estamos enseñando cómo recordar fondos para caridad. ¡Exacto! ¡Ay, oh, yes! ¡Bienvenido! Uh, Daniel, welcome, welcome, Daniel. Uh, and actually, yeah, for those that are joining, so you're gonna see here the language that I'm currently speaking with. I'm gonna be, you know, switching back and forth per slide. Uh, so, you know, just so that you know, right? That, like, if, if you only speak English and you join right now, and it's like, what's happening? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you. <laughs> But in chat, right, it doesn't matter what language you're speaking, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll answer any questions. Sí, este, ah, nada más dije, ¿no? los que entren ahorita que solo hablan inglés me van a decir, oye, pero no te estoy entendiendo nada, y sí, lo entiendo, pero tengo diferentes, este, a cada presentación está en un idioma, entonces, si no entiendes ahorita, lo entenderás después. Uh, but yes, welcome, welcome everyone, and yeah, uh, is there anything else that I have to say? Sí, gracias, Triana, por el comando. Gracias, gracias. Yes, thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, uh, but yes, exacto. Uh, como Daniel preguntó, ¿no? Estamos hablando de las motivaciones para hacer streams de caridad. Y de hecho, una motivación es que el recaudar fondos en tus streams añade otra motivación para hacer streams. Y es lo que también estuve diciendo cuando en, en, hace unos minutos, ¿no? En inglés, que... He escuchado a otras personas que llegan a un momento en que el que en el que hacer streams termina siendo rep repetitivo, ¿no? Es un juego, ya sea el mismo juego, un juego similar, ¿no? Y como que no hay mucho cambio. Y claro, tú puedes mejorar tus streams, ¿no? Cada vez que ves un, una nueva tecnología, un nuevo overlay o lo que sea. Pero creo que hacer streams de caridad sí añaden otra motivación. Y además rompe un poco con tu horario y tu zona de confort, ¿no? Que es, que es el, el otro punto. Entonces, en caso de que estés un poco desmotivado de streamear, no hiere, no, no te lastima intentar un stream de caridad, en mi opinión. Thank you, uh, Dani Daniel, for the host. Gracias, gracias, uh, Daniel. And of course, ah, y, y <ríe> I almost said it in English, uh, but no, regreso en español. Ajá, y por supuesto, ¿no? Una de las cosas que en mi opinión terminan siendo los streams de caridad, y claro, todo esto es en mi opinión, ¿no? Es mi punto de vista, es que los streams que son de caridad normalmente terminan siendo caóticos y muy gratificantes. Entonces, añade un poco de caos, pero también de mucha felicidad a, a tus streams. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of, you know, high level... Why fundraise? Eso es, a grosso modo, algunas razones de por qué podrías considerar hacer streams de caridad, ¿no? Y recaudar fondos. Ok, and again, if you have questions at any point, you know, feel free to interrupt. Si tú tienes cualquier pregunta, no, no importa, puedes interrumpir y ponerlo en el chat, and I will happily answer, y con gusto voy a contestar. Uh, maybe... Here, hey, okay. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go to the English part of things. And one of the reasons that I understand why people might not want to fundraise, right, is that there are some difficult parts to it. First of all, it can be time consuming. And it's something that I will admit, I didn't realize how time consuming it can be at times, especially the first one, unfortunately, because you're learning so much stuff that You know, there, there's a lot of different things that you have to add for the first time or keep in mind for the first time. 
So it can be time consuming. So you definitely need to spend some extra time than usual to do all the planning, overlays, you know, it, thinking about the incentives and having them in place or buying them. And I'll get to that. And again, all of these are kind of related, right? One way or another. But yes, it can be time consuming. It is what it is. Uh, it can be exhausting. And I think that's one that it's very important to measure yourself. Um, I personally know I can't do a fundraiser for more than a week uh, because, I, you know, I have a full time job and, you know, I, I, I already sometimes get exhausted from work. Uh, so even, you know, planning on the weekends, like what to do for my fundraiser can be even more exhausting. And, you know, it might take away a lot of my chill time. So it can be exhausting. And it'll definitely be more exhausting than your other streams, but you can definitely measure yourself how much you want to fundraise, right? Fundraising for one day, for two days, for a week, like I think they all bring a value one way or another and you really need to, you know, listen to yourself and make sure that you don't overdo it. Because that's the other thing, right? Like I feel like if you overdo it, it might be less likely for you to try it again. Um, and. I will say though with all of this that overdoing it's not only related to the amount of streams because ultimately you can have each stream be relatively low key with how much stuff you do for fundraisers but for example i know for me when i do fundraisers like the whole stream is very focused on the fundraising and my incentives can be very chaotic so i know it can be i know one day for me is very exhausting but you can definitely change how exhausting it is depending on how much energy you put into each day as well as how many days you actually fundraise and and it can be pricey right and when i say pricey i mean if you are thinking of having giveaways if you're thinking of having incentives that you're going to be using that you don't already own some of them you know once you buy it once you can use it forever like i know i have some stickers that i put on my face i bought you know like a sheet of stickers for one dollar or whatever and now i have so many options hey Ale, welcome welcome bienvenida Ale. i hope you are having a great day or else <laughs> We'll try to make it better here, Ale. Welcome, welcome. How how are you, friend? Yes, I hope you're all having a, a great day, really. I, I really hope so. But yes, you, you are joining us while we are talking about some of the challenges that you can have with fundraising. And I think not many... Like, it's important to keep them in mind, right? And they're unavoidable. You can reduce some of them depending on, you know how much commitment you put into a charity fundraiser how much energy and streams you dedicate to them as well as what options you decide to pick for your milestones incentives all of that Ooh, are there any special things i need to do if i want to raffle games or gift cards for a charity Daniel, that's a really good question because I know at least a friend of mine who does, you know, who has done fundraising for a really long time, mentioned something about when you do a raffle or a gift card, you can't actually I I, I, I need to pull I need to pull the message up because you, you can't in other words, you can't like make it so that you have to pay. I, I, and, and it can change by the way you phrase it, actually. But you can't phrase it something among the lines like, oh, you have to pay to join the giveaway. I think you can say something like you can you can you can pay to join a raffle. But if, if, if you do giveaways, if your incentive is joining a giveaway, you have to be very careful with how you phrase things, because I think there are some laws about, you know, how, you know, what you can do about, you know, gifting stuff with, you know, and people giving money to an organization and you gifting stuff in return. I need to double check uh, because that's a really good question. For example, I know what I do is to avoid all of that. What I do is that like, oh, if we reach to a certain milestone, anyone can join the giveaway. So I know I don't know the exact details of that because I've just avoided it completely. But for example, uh, actually, I, I am going to do a shout out um, to the person that I'm thinking of because the person that I'm thinking of who informed me about this is Ellie. Um, 
I keep I, I keep forgetting to do my own. Anyhow, <laughs> there's uh, anyhow it's okay. Uh, but yes, Ellie uh, is a is the one of the two founders of Cosmic Cards. You know, a Twitch team focused on you know diversity, inclusivity, and charity. And Ellie has taught me so much. You know, through her own actions as well as just in general through you know being part of Cosmic Hearts, so much about charity and fundraising. Uh, so actually, I. I will I will get that information in my next be right be right back, uh, Danielle, because that is a really good question and you have to be careful about about it. Does that make sense? Oh, in other words, if you invite everyone to join a gift card giveaway or raffle, it doesn't matter. Like that's completely fine. But if you are limiting certain people, if you're limiting those that donate to join the raffle you have to be careful with how you word it um so that's one part of that and then the other part is that you know ultimately you want to think about what bot or what you want to use to actually run the raffle right uh you can most likely any bot that you're using on twitch if you're already using one should have some raffle system but there's also so many other options, you know, there's overlays, like a spin the wheel, like if you Google, you know, spin the wheel, there's like so many options that, you know, you just like share the screen and you have a wheel spinner. Um, and I know that through Tiltify, you can download, I think through a CSV file or something like that, like the list of people that donated. Again, if you're doing that option of only those that donate can join the raffle type thing. And then you can have that list and easily, you know, dump it, whether in your bot or in a widget or anything like that. Well, that's actually a really good question uh, because you have to be a bit careful with how you phrase things, depending on how you're doing the giveaway. Mm. Oh, and you also want to think about how you're going to deal with reaching out to the person, right? Like if you're going to have, you know, your mods help you with keeping track of that or you have to keep track of that and you know whether it be a discord or twitch uh, but yeah no yes no of course uh i will actually no let me let me pull it up right now and I, and i'll make sure i explain that in spanish as well because that's a really important question uh so where is it let me raffle Okay. Okay, donation. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. I I I found the specifics um lo-fi. And it's not about phrasing things, it's about the difference like being careful with the difference right so no 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 let me go back let me go back <laughs> and again if, i'm sorry if i'm confusing things but no 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 I, I do want to get this straight okay 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 so there are three ways well if you want to give an item to someone there are three ways to go over it and when you're doing a fundraiser right so one is that you reach a milestone you have a giveaway for anyone that's in chat or you know whoever that's fine then you have the option of if you donate you join the raffle that's also fine but if you have something like you donate and you immediately get an item for donating that is illegal so i'm, I'm gonna read the specifics uh, uh, what Ellie said, because again, this is really important. So you cannot offer your codes for money. This counts as selling and is illegal in most places. So a donation equals a raffle ticket is fine. Or, you know, asking people in chat to enter, but you cannot say if you donate certain amount, then you will win a code. So you can't like guarantee to anyone that they're going to win a code. Okay, so that's the specifics. And I'm going to say it in Spanish now that I actually figure out the specifics. Lofi preguntó eh, eh, cosas que hay que recordar en cuanto a este, giveaways o... Eh, ¿Cómo se dice en español? 
Sí, giveaways, ¿no? Bueno, yo he visto en mis redes sociales en México que la gente usa la palabra giveaways, es el Spanglish. Ah, pero entonces, hay tres formas de hacer... de cuando Si tú quieres regalar un código de un juego en tus streams de caridad, hay... Puedes pensar lo que se pueden hacer de tres formas, pero una, no se, una es ilegal, no, no lo puedes hacer. Entonces, la primera fo forma es que tú tienes unos milestones, eh, unas metas, y cuando es, alguien llegue a una meta de cuánto dinero se ha recaudado en general, eh, haces un giveaway de los que están en el chat. Eso sí se puede. Otra opción es que los únicos que pueden entrar a un giveaway es la gente que dona cierta cantidad. Eso también se puede. Pero tú no puedes decir, ah, si tú donas cierta cantidad, te voy a dar esta, este código de juego. Porque eso se considera vender y, y en muchos lugares se puede considerar ilegal si haces algo de ese estilo. Exactly, I was thinking of, do of doing a giveaway or two for the Latin Heritage Month uh, thing we're setting up. Yeah, exactly, and I know I usually try to do giveaways uh, myself. I'm actually already planning a lot of that. I have like my entire, like, no I'm kidding, I have my entire um, Latina Heritage Month plan in advance. I reach out to different people and like, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but I, I have a, I have a plan. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely. And definitely doing this in mind for that, because I feel like, you know, many of us Latinas are going to be invited to, you know, participate in all these different events that people are doing. And many people might feel intimidated, but no, 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 there's so much wonder that you can do. Exactly, I need to open my trail of ideas. Yeah, no, definitely brainstorm as much as you want. And also, like, also, like, feel free, you know, you can ask me or anyone else, um, any of your friends, um, Daniel, about, you know, if, if people think it's a good idea of incentives, because I feel like also brainstorming with other people can be great. Hi, Andon, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to see what you get up to for uh, Latina Heritage Month. Thank you, thank you, Dom. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a whole plan. So I, I kind of realized, wait, wait, I should uh, help others, you know, uh, prepare for that if they are also considering doing that. So yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely doing this stream having Latina Heritage Month in mind. Um, uh, sí, estaba diciendo que... Bueno, una de las razones por la cual también estoy haciendo este stream en español. Bueno, una es que al final de cuentas... Este stream va a ser más accesible a más personas, ¿no? Por, por ser un stream bilingüe. Pero también porque, al menos en Estados Unidos, eh, en el mes de... Bueno, a partir del 15 de septiembre y hasta el 15 de octubre, o sea, por un mes, ese mes, eh, se celebra lo que se llama eh, el mes de herencia latinoamericana que es un mes en donde, al menos aquí en Estados Unidos, es una celebración de Estados Unidos. Ya, yeah, Latin Heritage Month is a U.S. celebration. From my understanding, I don't think it's celebrated in other non-Latine communities. Because, you know, in like, if you're in Mexico, you won't celebrate because, you know, you're kind of already Mexican, right? Uh, well, uh, entonces, estaba explicando, ¿no? Uh, so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain this more in Spanish because... I can see, you know, people that aren't living in the U.S. being like, wait, is there a month for celebrating, you know, like, Latines? So, yeah, there is. So, I'm explaining that in Spanish. Um, ajá. Y, 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 al final de cuentas, es una celebración de inmigrantes. Eh, al menos esa es mi opinión, ¿no? Porque, más que nada aquí en Estados Unidos, ¿no? Que hay gente que viene de todas partes del mundo y al final... Y a veces hay, hay personas que no reconocen eso, que intentan menospreciar a la gente que no es bueno que no es americana no que al final de cuentas pues nadie es americano o sea, entonces, o sea al final de cuentas los americanos también son inmigrantes de, de bueno los americanos son los nativos americanos o sea si, si queremos hablar de americanos los nativos americanos son las únicas personas que son americanas o sea, pero bueno no, no me quiero no me quiero enojar porque me pone me, me enoja mucho la gente aquí en Estados Unidos que dice soy americano, cuando normalmente las personas que dicen eso no son nativos americanos, entonces bueno, pero no quiere, ese no es el punto, el punto es que en Estados Unidos se quiere celebrar más la diversidad, ¿no? Entonces hay diferentes meses que se celebran diferentes culturas y una de esas culturas es la latinoamericana, entonces se celebra del 15 de septiembre al 15 de octubre. Entonces yo estoy, estoy haciendo planes para hacer cosas en mis streams que tengan que ver con la cultura latinoamericana 
Exacto, cada día es el mes de la herencia latina. Yeah, like, you know, ultimately, it's all about celebrating cultures all day, every day, and celebrating diversity, and just celebrating, like, people going through different things, because unfortunately our world, like, just obsesses with difference between us when... When we're just people, like, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> like, it is very sad and very frustrating how how much people obsess about finding differences and, like, oh, you know, you you are from this place or, you know, you look like this. But, like, it, it's also arbitrary. Like, if you really think about it, like, even at the, at the biological sense, it's just completely arbitrary with how you look, your size. Like, so many things are arbitrary. Um, and, like, it... They're arbitrary from the start, but then, you know, systemically there's been some discrimination a, a, a amongst those arbitrary differences. I mean, I say arbitrary, but of course, you know, it has to do with, you know, like, it, it's not random, right? But my point is really more about how, like, it's just frustrating how, how society just discriminates people. <laughs> uh. Ah, no, 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 yes, sí. ajá, sí, lo, lo que dice Trina también es cierto, ¿no? Que en Estados Unidos, eh, ajá, cuando digo palabra americana o una persona americana, me, ref, me refiero a una persona de Estados Unidos de América, pero sí, no, 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 y es válido, Trina, no, es muy válido lo que dices, ¿no? Pero al final de cuentas, eh, americanos, pues es el continente americano, ¿no? Uh, y curiosamente, ¿no? Uno diría, ah, pues simplemente utiliza estadounidense. Pero dato curioso, I should say this in English because probably those that speak English, no, I shouldn't say that. Like, yeah, it, it, it might be more likely that those that speak Spanish know this fact, but um, ajá, el, el punto es que en México, en México no se llama México, México se llama Estados Unidos Mexicanos. So, yeah, like a fun fact uh, is that, you know, People, f like, Mexico is not called Mexico. It's actually called United States of Mexico. And every time I bring this fun fact to someone, they never believe me. They're like, you're making it up. But no, <laughs> like, in the Constitution, it's the United States of Mexico. But anyway, <laughs> yes, no, I, I decided to join the debate, Triana, but yes, no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a complicated debate. But anyhow, I'm completely... Well, no, I mean, and I say it's, it's all related, but it's all, all related, you know, because... Because, you know, this... Like, yeah, because like it's just it's just what it is. Like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Dom says those who speak English need to hear us folks aren't the only Ameri Americans. Yeah, exactly. But yes, a lot of fun facts today. <laughs> um, but no, yes, no. Gracias, Trina. Thank you, thank you, Trina. Because yeah, like we're we're here about you know we're here to learn, we're here to talk, we're here to ask questions. And again, this is a this is a just chatting stream. I mean, of course, I have like you know, I have some um, things to cover. I mean, that's why I created these slides. But no, if if we want to talk, right? <laughs> if we want to talk about other stuff, you know, we can definitely do so. Um, but yeah, so that I guess that's a a small you know, extra information. <laughs> Uh, but I guess, you know, in general, <laughs> going back to charity stream, it's important to keep in mind some things that might make it more difficult and thinking about ways to reduce this, th this potential barriers to fundraise. Um, <laughs> entonces, eh, diciéndolo a grosso modo, ¿no? Eh, en español, ¿no? Que al final de cuentas, bueno, no al final de cuentas, pero es importante reconocer que no es necesario, no es fácil, o más bien puede haber dificultades al hacer streams de caridad. Este. Y. Eh, ajá, entonces, yo pensé al menos en tres cosas que pueden ser un poco difíciles al hacer streams de caridad. Uno es que toma tiempo, ¿no? Vas a tener que estar planeando más de lo normal, eh, tus streams de caridad y los diferentes comandos, incentivos, que voy a llegar a eso en su momento, pero la verdad sí toma mucho tiempo, sí. Bueno, más tiempo de lo normal, ¿no? Eh, ah, está bonito tu presentación, gracias. La hice en Canva. I, I made it in, in Canva. Uh, I should have a Canva command, do I have one? But pretty much, if, if you don't have Canva, like, you have to, like, 
it's free and then you can buy for the premium version which i mean i have the premium version because it's that good uh, but yeah, sí, eh, yo para usar para esta presentación utilicé una plata un, una página que se llama canva eh, que existe la versión grat gratuita y, y una versión que cuesta y la verdad puedes hacer muchísimas cosas con la versión gratuita entonces canva canva va a ser tu, tu mejor amiga exactly it's free and you can do whatever you want exactly um, ah bueno y también ajá eh, eh, otra parte de los streams de caridad que puede ser un poco complicado es que puede ser cansado no porque vas a, vas a tener más cosas que, que tomar en cuenta cuando estás streameando, vas a tener tus giveaways, los milestones los, los, este, las metas vas a tener cosas caóticas vas a, vas a tener que estar repitiendo qué estás haciendo y qué organización estás recolectando dinero y vas, va a ser cansado la verdad y es algo que puedes reducir, ¿no? Porque al final de cuentas tú decides cuánta energía le quieres poner a tus streams de caridad. Entonces es algo que tú puedes medir. Y también tú decides cuántos días vas a hacer el stream de caridad. No necesitas usar un mes o una semana. Puede ser nada más un día. Y un día puede ser igual de valioso que un, una semana o un mes. Entonces es algo importante que reconocer. Hola Vika, ¿cómo estás? Espero que tengas un muy buen día. O si no, las verás conmigo. <ríe> sí, hola, hola Vika. Estamos hablando sobre las cosas difíciles que uno puede encontrarse cuando es, uno está decidiendo recolectar dinero para, para alguna organización, ¿no? Haciendo streams de caridad. Entonces ya hablamos de que puede tomar tiempo, que puede ser un poco cansado y puede ser costoso. Esa es la otra parte, ¿no? Que puede ser costoso dependiendo de qué quieres que sean tus eh, giveaways, que, <ríe> el or else, ¿no? Este, qué quieres que sean tus metas, si quieres muchas cosas. Y voy a llegar a eso a su momento, ¿no? Cuando hable de esos temas en particular. Pero tú lo puedes hacer no tan costoso, porque no necesariamente tienes que comprar algo. Puedes comprar cosas muy baratas que puedes seguir reutilizando en futuros streams de caridad. Oye, oh, yeah. <risa> lo ya verás, perfecto. Lo, lo tengo que guardar, deja, deja remind, o oh, ya verás. <risa> Supongo que es la mejor traducción de or else, ¿no? <risa> O, o no sé si ustedes tengan otra mejor traducción, pero supongo que ese lo ya verás. <risa> ah, pero bueno, eso es. Ajá, so, eso es. Eh, a grosso modo. Eh, cosas que tomar en mente cuando estás haciendo streams de caridad que pueden ser difíciles, right? So yeah, this was high level. Things that might be a bit difficult and challenging when you are doing fundraising. Plus some. Um, Fun fact about American and Mexican culture. Y unos datos curiosos sobre la cultura mexicana y americana. <laughs> I have flashbacks of my grandma saying this to me. O ya verás. O ya verás. <laughs> I love it. Me encanta. Okay, so next, next section is about using a tool called Tiltify, which it's not the only tool, but it's the most commonly used tool that already does a lot for you. And honestly, tool-wise, it's the only tool that I've used, so I'm only going to focus on Tiltify as the platform to how to connect people donating to a fundraiser that you're organizing with your goals and so on. Entonces, eh, ahora voy a hablar sobre cómo recaudar dinero. Eh, ¿Cómo haces que cuando alguien done dinero por un link, esa parte se conecte a las metas que tú tengas de cuánto quieras recaudar y demás? ¿no? Y obviamente hay muchas plataformas para hacer esto, pero la plataforma que es más común y sinceramente la única que yo he usado que sea por medio de una plataforma es Tiltify. Bueno, así, así se llama, no Tiltify o Tiltify, no sé cómo se diga en español. Entonces, hay muchas más, pero voy a hablar de, de Tiltify porque es la que yo tengo más experiencia. Uh, but actually, before we get to that, I am going to take a quick break. 
uh, to drink some water and stretch. Um, entonces antes de empezar de, de Tiltify voy a tomarme un break para tomar agua y descansar. Uh, I invite you all to do the same. Los invito a todos a hacer lo mismo. Um, and again, at any point during the conversation, we can talk about other stuff. Like I know we talked about, you know, what it means, to, what does American mean? <laughs> um, and yes, you're more than invited to do so because again, I have these presentations to guide me, but more than anything, this is also a conversation, right? But if if you're like me, that sometimes you're, you know, that you always hated hated participation in class, like you don't you don't need to participate. <laughs> you can just listen and take notes, like how I was in school. Estaba diciendo que si tú me puedes interrumpir en cualquier momento para hacerme preguntas, para hablar de otra cosa que tengas en mente y demás, porque al final de cuentas, ¿no? Yo tengo esta presentación para que me guíe y recordar y, y que no se me olvide ningún punto que, que quiera mostrarles a ustedes y decirles a ustedes sobre eh, hacer streams de caridad, pero... Ajá, pero entonces ustedes pueden hablarme de lo que sea. Bueno, obviamente enfocado a caridad, pero si terminamos hablando de otra cosa no hay problema. Pero también, ¿no? si no quieres no importa, porque yo, yo en la escuela era de esas personas que me chocaba participar y era de tomar notas y ya, ¿no? Entonces si tú eres de esas personas, bienvenida. <ríe> Ajá, thank you Triana for the community check. Ajá, so be right back.
Ok, I'm back. He regresado. I hope you all had a nice break. Espero que todos hayan tenido un buen descanso. Este, but yeah, we'll continue. Uh, continuaremos. And now we will be talking about Tiltify. Uh, so again, I think it's it's really just a really good tool. And again, not sponsored than anything, obviously. But no, it's just a really good tool that, you know, it's kind of like the default tool. And actually, you know, Twitch is starting to consider adding their own way of doing fundraising. But I think for now, it's still Tiltify. Because it's another thing. Twitch is trying to how they themselves can involve hacer donaciones por medio de Twitch directamente a una caridad, pero por ahora Tiltify sigue siendo la plataforma más común. Um, okay, and at some point we're gonna go to like a demo, but I, I feel like this this you don't really need demo as much for this part as I think it's very self-explanatory. Uh, ah, so I guess that. Although actually I should I should probably provide the link. Uh, whoa. Wait a second. Why can't I see my mouse? Oh, no, 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 no. Oops. Okay, there you go. I'm like, wait, I can't see my mouse. What's happening? Tiltify. Let me share the link. Uh, here it is. Aha, uh -huh, so that's Tiltify. You first need to sign up if you haven't signed up already. And when you sign up, connect through your Twitch. You can create an account, but ultimately, you know, in order to kind of facilitate the whole co connection of people donating and, excuse me, it being reflected to your Twitch channel, just log in through Twitch, first off. Then there's gonna be different views that you can access, but ultimately the main one, and this is similarly to, you know, when you use things like stream elements or other similar bots or overlay, things related and you know there's like a dashboard to see all the information right so dashboard is gonna be your bestie <laughs> well i mean dashboard you can access everything you can access the campaign details the team details because you can have some teams within tiltify uh you can see overlays like default overlays even your personal information uh, but if you want to set up a campaign for the first time you're gonna go to their, their, their dashboard and then go to campaigns and it's gonna open you know a list of campaigns that you've done uh, some which are retired and some which you know you currently have in place um, and uh, oh that's another thing I guess I should mention that that at least in Tiltify any campaign that is not retired, people can still donate to, whether you promote it or not. But eventually, there's going to be a there's going to be a max. Like eventually, their campaigns are going to retire. You can retire them on your own, but I think it's after sixty days of you not getting any donation through a campaign, it's going to retire automatically. And retire, yeah, it means that people can donate. So I guess just keep that in mind. But anyhow, that's not the point. The point is that if you want to set up a Tiltify campaign, you go to Dashboard Campaigns, and then there's going to be a Create New Campaign button. And you're going to click that. And then I'll explain a bit more of that. Ajá, entonces, ahorita expliqué a grosso modo eh, qué tienes que hacer para crear una campaña en Tiltify. Eh, puse el link en el chat, ¿no? Que obviamente lo primero que necesitas es tener una cuenta en Tiltify. Y cuando tú creas tu cuenta, puedes espe especificar con qué lo quieres vincular. Y al final de cuentas, lo que, con lo que lo quieres vincular es con tu, tu Twitch, tu canal de Twitch, ¿no? Tu cuenta de Twitch. Entonces... Wait, I'm just... Did I... Give me a second, did I miss something? No, I'm going... Okay, no, no, no. I thought I missed something. Está bien, todo bien. Vamos bien por ahora. <laughs> um, ajá, Tiltify, tu cuenta, conectarlo con Twitch. Y una de las primeras cosas que vas a ver es diferentes como vistas. Y entonces, la que vas a usar más es tu dashboard, ¿no? Tu tablero. I, I don't, I, no sé cómo se, se traduzca, pero supongo que que una de estas dos, ¿no? Pero tu dashboard, ¿no? Donde puedes ver información de tus campañas, tus equipos, 
eh, overlays y demás, cuánto has recaudado en total. Entonces, para crear una campaña en Tiltify, le picas en campañas y vas a ver todas las diferentes campañas. Y vas a ver, de hecho, dos tipos de campañas. Bueno, tres. Bueno, dos. Una que es las que están activas, es decir, que la gente puede seguir donando. Las que tienen... Ajá, las que... Por, por el link que genere Tiltify, la gente va a poder donar. Y campañas retiradas, es decir, que la gente ya no puede donar directo de tu link. Eh, tú puedes en cualquier momento decidir retirar una campaña, pero en las campañas, después de no haber recibido dinero por esa campaña por más de 60 días, automáticamente se van a retirar. Es algo... Es algo bueno, que la verdad es muy útil tenerlo en mente porque a veces, de hecho, por ejemplo, en mi Axel, en mi stream de orgullo de la comunidad LGBTQ+, LGBT+, <ríe> I realized that, anyhow, uh, LGBT+, eh, yo tuve que asegurarme que no pasaran más de 60 días porque de hecho hice como dos diferentes sesiones de ese stream. Yeah, no, and actually something that I forgot to say in English is that, uh, yeah, no, it's important to know those 60 days because if for some reason you want to go back to a previous campaign and continue fundraising for it, you have to make sure that there has been an activity, you know, a donation activity within at least, you know, under less than 60 days. But anyhow, you, uh, uh, campañas y le, y le picas aquí en, 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 la, en el mensaje que dice crear una nueva campaña ok, going back to English so when you are creating a campaign right uh, there's going to be different details that it's going to ask you to provide so one is a charity organization which Tiltify has so many uh, actually, and I, I, should, I should go ahead and share this I no, 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 no Huh? Yes, so, so many. Uh, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you first log in through Tiltify, you can even look up different campaigns and causes and stuff. And there's so many. And, you know, even in the main page, you can see a lot of different ones. And you can even see different people that stream stuff. But there's, ultimately, there's so, so many different options. Um, so definitely think about and again going back to our section of why fundraise at this point you probably already have something in mind right but if you don't you can definitely look up stuff through through Tiltify itself uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay yeah I'm, I'm going back uh -huh. so you know thinking of a charity and organization Then it's going to ask you if you want to do an individual or a support, i.e. through a team. And if you want to do it through a team and the team hasn't been created yet, going back to that main section, you would want to click on teams and create a team. Uh, and again, there, there's more details for that. And I'm not going to go much into, into detail, but ultimately you can have your stream and your goal be connected to a major goal That is a team goal. And I know that's how I did in Cosmic Hearts. Actually, I should do a shout out to them because everyone in that team is amazing. I, I learn from them every day. Like, I'm not even joking. <laughs> uh, but yes. Um, so, you know, how much you earn gets added up to like the team goal. So then, you know, the team goal can be like a bigger goal and we can all help each other. And there's other reasons, you know, to do a team, but the main one is to almost kind of have like a more connected goal and then different sub and then each streamer can have its own goal that is reasonable for themselves. But then if it's like a lot of people fundraising, you can kind of see how much you've all collected, you know, how much money you all collected for one organization. So it can be even it, it it's almost a way to more easily show who is working together for the same goal as well as how much support there was collectively. Uh, then there's also campaign name and URL, which, you know, that's like, yeah, you have to name it. But 
uh, one of the things I realized is that when you first create a campaign, it's gonna ask you for the name and URL, and usually it's gonna, for the URL, it's gonna try to do the same thing. Like, it's gonna try to copy the name, but sometimes the name might be longer than you want to do your URL. Uh, so actually, I can even pull up some examples of what I've done for mine. Uh, I think... Uh, aha, so for example, in my case, right, I have my Fierce Axolotl, my Axolotl fan for Pride 2020. That's the name. Uh -huh. No, 22. Uh -huh. For Pride 22. And then the URL is different, right? The URL is just uses my username with Pride 22, right? Which even even now looking at that, my URL already has Fierce Axolotl. So maybe, maybe actually in the future, I might do my URL to just be Pride 22. So only have, you know, the Pride 22 part. But then the name, it'd be more longer than the URL. And ultimately, like, you might think, oh, that's a small thing. But no, I mean, it can help with discoverability, right? If people are looking out for campaigns that, you know, that have to do with pride, then, you know, if they look up pride, they're going to find your campaign. And I also always try to, you know, include the Axolotl fam in the name. Because ultimately, you know, those that are going to help you reach your goal is going to be the community. I mean, you're going to have do so many so so much planning about the different incentives and the different overlays and a lot of that but i mean it, it's a community it's your community who is helping you get to that goal so you you also have to be really mindful and, and very thankful of, of of them um and you all know at least here that you know you're all amazing <laughs> but no when you make your own campaigns you have to very much be clear of of that and be mindful of that a description right just kind of explaining what it's for definitely explain if, if you're part of a team that's doing this or why you're doing this and you know just kind of personalize it a little bit okay entonces detalles de la campaña eh, como hablamos antes no ya eh, tendrás alguna motivación de por qué quieres hacer un stream de caridad entonces probablemente ya tengas en mente una caridad una organización Y como dije antes, este, en caso de que no sepas o tengas como una idea en mente, puedes buscar en la página principal de Tiltify, puedes buscar por diferentes organizaciones y causas y te puede ayudar como a saber las opciones que hay. Um, but that's that. Ah, eso es, eso es esa primera parte. Ay, Jaycee, hola, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenido. Let's go. Hola, hola, Jaycee, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés bien. Espérame, ¿cuál, cuál era la frase? Ah, Triana, tú habías dicho otra frase. Ah, el conste, también. No, pero creo que, creo que me gusta el... O oh, ya verás. <laughs> uh, trying to start the week. We're, we're all trying. Yeah, no, like, Mondays can be tricky. Los lunes pueden ser un poco cansados. But, but we got this. We got this. <laughs> Uy, déjenme estiro tantito. Ok. Pero sí, bienvenido, Jaycee. Estamos hablando cómo crear tu campaña en Tiltify. Y ahorita estoy eh, hablando sobre los detalles de la campaña. Este, hablando un poco de cómo buscar diferentes organizaciones a las cuales quieres donar tu dinero. Eh, y obviamente, bueno, no obviamente, pero algo que mencioné un poco antes, ¿no? Es que tú puedes eh, recaudar dinero de forma individual o en un equipo. Y la forma en la que funciona en Tiltify de equipo es que... Tú vas a tener tu meta, ¿no? Una meta que haga sentido... Eh, que, que haga sentido con lo que tú crees poder llegar eh, en cuanto a dinero. Pero esa cantidad que alcances en tu stream se va a añadir... Eh, eh, Lonzo, uh, thank you so much for the host. Gracias, gracias. Uh, I appreciate you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Pero esa cantidad que tú logres eh, recolectar se va a añadir a un total de un equipo, ¿no? Que tú eres parte. Entonces es como una forma de, de como ser parte de algo más grande, ¿no? Y al final de cuentas, colectivamente, recaudar aún más dinero 
y hacerlo notar, ¿no? De una forma fácil. En ti, no tienes que estar añadiendo tú y demás, ¿no? Simplemente se va a ver en la página principal. Y también es una forma fácil de ver quiénes están participando en tu stream de caridad. Y yeah, it's another easy way to see who's participating, actually. Yeah, I should, I should show an example. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show the one of Cosmic Cards, actually. Um, so, let me... Let me exit. Yeah, I'm gonna do this in... Oops, I'm gonna do this in English and Spanish. Because I forgot. Um, but yeah, so for example, this is the team, the team page of Cosmic Hearts. You know, when we fundraise for, for Pride. You know, this is like the main goal. And then, you know, we actually reach our original goal. And then there was different ways. And it's gonna look something like that. Uh, and then you're gonna see individually who... Which other individual streamers are fundraising and supporting this bigger or you know this bigger goal so you know we have so many wonderful people here <laughs> um and yeah you can see like everyone who participated uh and then you know how much they each reach and then you can more easily you know for example this is this is the one the exolotl fam you can click on that one and then see that individual fundraiser so it's a way to kind of work for something bigger Anto estaba explicando esta parte, ¿no? Que la forma en la que se va a ver eh, el equipo en Tiltify es algo como esto, ¿no? Que esta es un, una meta del de equipo de Twitch Cosmic Hearts, que yo soy parte, eh, para este Pride, para el mes de orgullo. Y aquí puedes ver, ¿no? Todos los que están participando en el equipo. Ay, y también puedes ver este... Thank you so much for the host, Molecule. I appreciate you. También puedes ver quién... Ah, porque una cosa es crear un equipo y después en el equipo tú creas una meta del equipo, right? Like one thing is to create a team and then within the team you create a, a goal for that team, right? So it's kind of two different things. But anyhow, right, you can see different people that fundraise for this organization. And then you can click in, in each individual one to see their different goals, right? Like this is like my organization, for example. Uh, so yes, I forgot to mention that part. Yes, welcome, welcome, small girl. Uh, hola, hola. <laughs> so yes, benefit. And, and I'd say, I think, I think it's best to do a team. Creo que lo mejor es hacer un equipo. Um, because kind of what I even said earlier that, you know, you kind of motivate each other, help each other, brainstorm with each other. So if you're thinking about doing a fundraiser, do consider, you know, reaching out to it. Even if you're not part of, you know, any Twitch team or whatever, like reach out to your friends. That's kind of what we were talking about before, how Triana had an idea about a fundraiser and then all, all of her friends decided to help her. Yo la verdad sí recomiendo el equipo porque es una forma en la que te, te puedes apoyar, puedes como eh, rebotar ideas, ¿no? Si, si estás como atorado en no saber qué hacer para tus streams y hay como más motivación porque hay como una meta más grande. Y también y no tienes que ser parte de un, de un equipo de Twitch o cualquiera de esas cosas, ¿no? O sea... Si tú tienes una idea, te puedes acercar a tus amigas y preguntarles, que de hecho fue lo que, lo que nuestra amiga Triana hizo, ¿no? Que mencionamos previamente. Uh, también, bueno, regresando a la parte de español, también eh, tienes que poner un nombre y el enlace. Y como expliqué previamente, no tienen que ser los mismos. Y de hecho, esto fue como yo lo nombré la vez pasada. Pero, por ejemplo, sinceramente creo que en el futuro no tengo que repetir la parte de Fierce Axolotl dos veces, ¿no? Porque ella es parte de mi URL. Yo creo que en el futuro voy a hacer algo como esto. Para que sea más corto y más accesible y, y más fácil, ¿no? Porque también ayuda con, con el alcance. Si la gente está buscando Pride, Orgullo, entonces va a aparecer tu, tu stream, ¿no? Y tu... Eh, tu evento tu campaña, esa es la palabra y la descripción, ¿no? también la descripción ah, y, y la parte del nombre que es importante ¿no? es que reco reconoce que al final de cuentas esta campaña tú la estás organizando 
pero los que van a dar todo el apoyo es tu comunidad, ¿no? O sea, por ejemplo, por eso mi campaña, eh, bueno, la campaña que yo creé se llama Axolotl Fam, ¿no? La familia Ajolote, porque al final de cuentas es tu comunidad la que te va a apoyar a alcanzar las metas, a hacer preguntas, a hacerlo divertido. Entonces no olvides agradecer mucho a tu comunidad, muy, muy importante. Again, any questions, feel free to interrupt at any time, regardless of if it's related to this scene or something that you think about later, you can, you can interrupt. Vuelvo a repetir, puedes interrumpir en cualquier momento, eh, si es necesario, ya sea de algo que hablé ahorita, que hablé antes o que hablaré después, ¿no? incluso cosas que no he hablado sobre caridad. Okay, so now we're going back to English. And another great thing about Tiltify, so many integrations, so many. Of course, you have the alert section. The way, you know, if someone follows or subscribes. JC, did I thank you for the subscription? I don't think I did. JC, thank you so much for the subscription. I'm, I, I have like very focused <laughs> to make sure I don't forget anything, but thank you, thank you, JC. No, I did, right? I did, I, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just seeing my activity feed and I'm like, wait, wait, what happened? Uh, but no, no, no. Well, point being, right? The way when someone subscribes or follows, there's an alert. You can have an alert when someone donates. Very important. You can also have a Twitch extension. So in your About panel, you can actually include, um, you know, different, uh, what's the word? Oh yeah, you can include a way for people, for there to be like automatically a panel that talks about your fundraiser, your milestones, your rewards, and all the information in one little place. Very easy because it, sometimes people might want to donate to your stream, but they're too shy to, you know, do the exclamation mark donate. Like they don't want to be perceived, especially if they want to donate anonymously. And of course, and I'm going to get to commands later. But a really great way is to have this extension, right? Because then they can easily, oh, go to their about, go to your about panel, which automatically shows up if you're in, on desktop. And then if you're on mobile, this extension is going to appear as one of the extensions in the extension buttons, right? But anyhow, they can just go to this extension and donate and that's it. Right? Exactly. Daniel, there's a Twitch extension. I didn't know this, right? And I feel like a lot of people might not know things like this. And I know I, I learned about this, you know, relatively recently. So yes, Twitch extension, highly recommend. And of course the overlay, right? Like a way for people to see in your stream, your goal. Uh, oh, and then yeah, the, the, the QR code. Yeah, and the QR code can, can show up in the, in the overlay, in the overlay, in the Tiltify overlay. There's a QR code, you know, a bar to show your progress, your milestones, your incentive. It's kind of like a way to show that on stream. But then you can also have outside of your stream, like the extension. Uh, and actually, I can show a little bit of them. Let me actually open up uh, the right section as to where you can find these. So for alerts, I use stream elements. You can add alerts in the overlays, but for my experience, the overlay alerts on Tiltify can be very delayed. And I don't know what it is. Like this one, like not get me wrong, actually the, the one on stream elements can be a little bit delayed, but for some reason the one in Tiltify, my experience is really delayed. So that's why I have it separate. Just again, all of this from my experience. Um, Let me just double check. Integration. Okay, let me, nope. And in stream elements, if you go to your profile, if you go to integrations, there's gonna be a Tiltify integration that you can connect to. So that's the way to do it. And then, If you've done alerts through here, uh, you can go to my overlays and then there's gonna be a Tiltify alert overlay that I created, which is gonna have, uh, actually I think it's through here, charity and seasonal, 
and then tiltify right you're gonna create one of these and then the settings and stuff that you should already know right if you created alert through stream elements and there's very similar to that um, uh -huh, so that's the first then for extension for the twitch extension let me look up the link uh, so that's in my dashboard in extensions uh, tiltify that one I can just share the link I think this should work for everyone I'm gonna share it great simply install the ex extension as how you installed all other extensions and then the one in the one in Tiltify is easier because in the dashboard you can go... Oh, thank you, thank you, Lonzo. Thank you so much. Uh, in, the one in Tiltify is easier because you go to the dashboard, you click in overlays. Actually, I, I, should, I should share that real quick. Um, oh, I, I do need to sign in. Let me quickly sign in. I was signed off. Uh, dashboard, overlays. Um... Oh no, I think... Well, no. Well, the way I usually do it, actually, is in a given campaign, when you're looking at the dashboard or the overview of that campaign, there's going to be an overlay tab. Um, okay, I found it. There's going to be an overlay tab that's going to look like this. And one of my suggestions is to really customize it right like for example i have a different color scheme you know and, and you can see right like i have a color scheme you know certain blue tone and pink tones that i put in my stream so i make sure that that matches actually the way i have my stream right to personalize it um and then of course you can have the qr the qr code that uh loaf i was talking about and different things and you can customize you can customize a lot of it I, I should honestly i should even look at it more frequently to see if i can add more stuff um oops i went too far um entonces ahora hablando en español hay diferentes integraciones de tiltify que puedes utilizar unas que son las alertas eh, yo utilizo stream elements este y en tus overlays puedes eh, generar una alerta de Tiltify. Eh, tienes que, eh, que al menos ajá, que está en el más, eh, caridad, caridad y Tiltify. Y hay otras, hay otras este, extensiones ¿no? que puedes añadir. Eh, ajá. Thank you so much, uh, Ale, for the host. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Let me actually just double check. Let me check over here. Dejen reviso algo. Eh, the stream elements. Ah, no. Esperen. Uh, eh, ahí voy. Ahorita les muestro... Cómo integrarlo, ¿no? Porque al principio no te va a aparecer esa opción. Entonces tienes que ir a tu perfil. Bueno, no, tienes que ir a tu dashboard. Luego en tu dashboard le pones en eh, los settings de tu canal. Y en la parte de integraciones vas a ver Tiltify, que esa es la forma de, de conectarlo. Eh, y... Ah, y el overlay, ¿no? Como expliqué previamente, cuando tú haces una campaña, hay diferentes tabs que puedes seleccionar y hay una selección de overlay. Eh, creas uno, que yo, yo, ajá, yo les recomiendo empezar con el, con el default y de ahí puedes elegir eh, qué diferentes widgets añadir, ¿no? Por ejemplo, yo añadí el widget de eh, la lista de eventos, ¿no? Que me dice quiénes han donado. También el código de QR que Daniel mencionó previamente. Y la información general, ¿no? 
de cuánto se ha recolectado, quién ha donado más, cómo se llama tu campaña eh, y cuál es la causa por la cual estás eh, recaudando dinero y demás. Uh, so yeah, those are like the three main, you know, integrations that I recommend. But of course, there's, there can be definitely more. Ah, esas son las tres integraciones que les recomendaría, pero obviamente hay más. Uh, now we get to the commands part, uh, which can be sometimes overlooked. But yes, you should have all the commands all the time. Well, not all the time, right? You don't want to be spammy, but you should have the commands in the timer, especially the donate and fundraiser, right? The way for people to be able to donate to your charity. And also the one that explains about what you're fundraising for. Uh, of course, you know, there's others that can be you know, add it in your title and as timers, depending on, on which ones are. Ah, eso fue de solamente una cosa que tiene un problema a hacer. Uh, what do you refer, a qué te refieres con eso? What, what do you refer to, to that? Yeah, I know there's some delay, so I think I, I missed uh, what exactly you were referring to, Alonso. So yeah, sorry about that. Ah, uh, but thank you for being here. Yeah. Sí, no gracias por estar aquí, Gonzo, y por preguntar. Muchas gracias. Bueno, y por comentar, uh, for, for commenting. Um. But yes, there's different, you know, commands. And sometimes you can combine the, the information on each. So, for example, I have my donate command to show both the fundraiser info and the link to donate. Because both for me, both of them are very important. So I put them all in one. Thank you, Triana, for the lure. Gracias, gracias. Uh, but of course, you know, and for example, if you don't want to separate the milestone and incentive, you can put them all in one. Because again, sometimes it can be a bit spammy, so these are kind of some ideas of what to keep in mind. But I I'd say try to reduce as possible. And of course, right, if you have a team, have a team command. You know, if you're fundraising with other people, again, it doesn't need to be a Twitch team. If you're just fundraising with other people, definitely include a team link so that people can support each other. Uh, that with integration, exactly. Ah, exactly. E e exacto, exacto. E exacto, Lonzo. Sí, eso fue solo como una explicación, ¿no? Y un ejemplo sobre cómo uh, añadir in integraciones de Tiltify. Yes, thank you, thank you, Lonzo. Um... Oh, and then read the info out loud because you're gonna have people that might only be listening. So don't assume that, you know, whatever is in chat is going to be uh, read. So the way I measure how frequent I talk about the fundraiser is by the timers. If I see the timer and I see the message, then that's when I do my little, you know, like talk about why we're fund, you know, who we're fundraising for, explaining the different milestones, incentives, etc. Um, entonces, una parte impor importante es tener diferentes comandos para hablar sobre tu stream de caridad, para mencionar las metas, los incentivos, el link de donar, ¿no? The donate link. El link de donar es muy importante, es la forma para que la gente pueda donar. Y también, al igual de importante que donar, un comando que explique sobre la organización que estás eh, recaudando dinero. Porque al final de cuentas, esto es, es, es como lo más importante de tu stream, ¿no? Esto obviamente son incentivos y cosas extra que lo hace más divertido, pero pues esto es lo más importante, ¿no? El que la gente pueda donar si quiere y el que la gente se informe sobre tu evento y la organización que estás este, recaudando fondos. Entonces yo lo que hago es que tengo un tempor temporizador o tengo un timer <risa> que cada ciertos minutos pone uno de los comandos también los pongo en mi título y cuando los comandos aparecen en mi chat, leo la información en voz alta, ¿no? Porque hay gente que tal vez nada más te, esté en tu stream y nada más esté escuchando, ¿no? Que no esté participando en el chat. Entonces, es importante tanto tenerlo de forma escrita como verbal. Y una recomendación es que estos son ejemplos, ¿no? No... no no tienes que tener todos estos porque si no va, va a terminar spameando mucho. Entonces lo, lo mejor sería combinar algunos. Por ejemplo, yo combino el de donar con caridad. Y entonces cuando alguien pone ex, exclamación donar, 
aparece tanto el link de donación y explica sobre la caridad. También eh, puedo, yo a veces también mezclo eh, el de metas e incentivos en el propósito. Eh, propósito. I think I might translate that wrong. No sé si lo traducí bien. Pero bueno, lo mejor intenta combinar los más que puedas para que no sea muy, muy spammy. Welcome, welcome, that uh, the Angelo. Bienvenido, bienvenido, ese uh, de Angelo. Hey, hey, friends, welcome. Happy to have you here. Let me know if you want to be called differently. Uh, you know, if you want to be called by your full username or a nickname, I'm happy to change the way I refer to you by. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, and I guess this is a good moment for me to pause and just explain high level what we're going uh, over. So I'm explaining the basics of charity fundraiser. So that includes why, the motivation behind it, things to keep in mind, platforms that you should use for donating. In, in my case, I went over Tiltify and its integrations, commands, and we're currently in the command section. We're gonna get to the section of milestones, incentives, etc. And I'm doing this in English and Spanish to help with, you know, to help with being able to reach out to even more people. And it's gonna be saved on my YouTube channel. So if you missed the beginning and you really wanted to check it, um, you can find it on YouTube. Entonces, nada más estoy haciendo una pausa para explicar de qué trata este stream. Estoy haciendo un stream que explica las cosas básicas que, que tomar en cuenta cuando hace streams de caridad. Desde el por qué, eh, cosas que tener en mente, plataformas que usar para recaudar fondos, que en mi caso yo hablé sobre Tiltify, diferentes ex extensiones que existen y ahorita estamos hablando de los comandos. Si perdiste parte del principio y, y quieres verlo, voy a guardar este video en mi YouTube, que el link está en el chat. Uh, so ya, yeah, uh, estaba terminando la parte de comandos y la única parte que se me olvidó, ay no, traduje esta parte, pero también necesitas un, unos comandos en caso de que sea necesario, que hablen de tu equipo, eh, se me olvidó traducir que es el team o tus este o la gente que te está acompañando en caso de que hagas un co-stream no eh, ay se me fue la palabra pero bueno tus guests <ríe> mis spanglish al 100% por um, oh and uh, that D'Angelo or anyone else in chat any questions Whether it's something that I covered before or that I haven't covered, I'm covering right now, feel free to ask and interrupt. Si tienes preguntas de lo que ya cubrí, de lo que aún no he cubierto, de lo que estoy hablando ahorita, pregunta. Ah, oh, so great, thank you. Yeah, no, no worries, D'Angelo. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so now we're going to get to the incentives, which can be... The, the whole setup that I talked about before is going to be... It's gonna take some time to get used to, especially if it's your first stream. But after that, I'd say that the things that you spend the most time on is figuring out which incentives are milestone, right? Because ultimately you want to have variation every time you do a different charity event. Um, so these are some ideas that I've, you know, gotten through watching other people's charity streams. Like if, if, you, if you don't, Another good way to learn about charity streaming is to join someone's charity event because you learn so much about the way they talk about the fundraiser, the way they have the timer set up, the way they have the commands, you know, the information in the commands, the when they the way they title their streams, like the best way to learn from others. And I mean, I'm this is kind of more, inf you know, informative, but if you want the experience, you can watch other people's fundraisers. Um, so I've definitely learned a lot of this, you know, online, through different people, just things that I've collected. So of course, well, not of course, but there's a lot of different incentives that you can implement. One that I, it took me a while to actually realize until I saw other people doing it is a stream overlay. And that's a free one to do. You just have to, you know, if there's a meme going on in your channel, like I know in my channel for, for a long, it, it has died out a little bit, uh, but we have a whole Axel Molly meme going on, <laughs> uh, which is just, yeah, actually, let me just use, let me just explain that with my command. Wait, is it, is it that? Nope. Uh, is it Molly? I think it's just Molly. Aha, aha. Okay, there, there you go. Oh, it's on cooldown. 
Oh, okay, anyhow. Uh, but yes. Anyhow, if you have something Mimi, then you can add that Mimi thing as an overlay. If people do some donation, right? And again, that's free, easy to do, and people are gonna love it. And it doesn't even need to be Mimi. Like if it's, you know, if you're fundraising during Pride Month, you know, you could be like, oh, every time you donate, uh, tell me a flag that you like from the LGBT plus community and I'll put it in my stream, right? Or you can be really creative with this and it's free. So, one that I definitely recommend. If you're worrying about expenses, stream overlay. Huge recommendation. Then, of course, you have wearables. Uh, these, which can be a bit expensive, depending on how you do it. Ah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Norma, for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. Uh, welcome. Actually, I'm going to do the Ask Me Anything. There you go. But yes, welcome. Uh, we're going over incentives currently. And again, all the information is going to be saved on YouTube. Uh, so if you missed anything, you can definitely check the video in the future. Uh, so yeah, we were talking about the wearables, which this, I mean, depending on how crazy you, how, depending on how wild and how creative you want to be in the wearable, it can be pricey, but not necessarily, for example, sticker on face. I bought a really cheap, you know, smiley stickers and I bought, you know, one that like has so many, like so many different pages that it's gonna, like it's gonna last for a really long time. Like there's no way I've used them all. And it's a good way, you know, to kind of let, let your donors pick what color they like. So, you know, you have them have an option and it's cheap, but it's also cute. So. Some of these wearables can be on the cheaper end, but again, if you want to do like a a hat that, you know, has a lot of stuff going on or I don't know, if you want to like, you can, you can be really creative as well, but then some of that creativity can be more expensive. So definitely. Oh no, thank you for doing this. Sorry to be late. We'll definitely catch up. No, nothing to apologize about being late. I mean, that's why I'm saving it as a bot because especially I know on a Mondays, it can be a bit more tricky for people. Uh, and yeah, and nothing to think. I, I, I'm so glad that I can share some knowledge because I learned from so many people myself. So I should, you know, ultimately thanks to the Twitch community or at least the people that I've interacted with that have taught me so much. Ah, sí, gracias, eh, Dr. Norma. Sí, según yo se dice streamers, ¿no? ¿no? La verdad, es la palabra que yo he utilizado hablar en español, entonces no, no hay problema. Uh, sí, claro, claro, Dr. Norma. <laughs> But yes, wearables, a really good option. And it can be a cheap one, but it could also not be. Oh, then eating challenge, right? So for that one, you have to be really careful. Like you don't want to overdo yourself because you don't want to like get sick <laughs> or anything like that. Um, so I've never, I've never done spicy, for example, even though I really like spicy food. I know my stomach can feel a bit uneasy if I have a lot. So I personally, that's a limitation. I'm not going to do spicy ever. Uh, weird flavor I'm okay with. Like I can deal with that. So, you know, the bean bozo is something that I do include. And I think honestly a really good one. Well, no, <laughs> I did the olive one and it did destroy me because I didn't like olives. But it's one that like, it's not going to hurt your stomach because it's something that people like. But it's going to be something that you personally don't like. Uh, so I think that, and you know, th this I think this might be the easiest option among these that I share here. But maybe it's the one that you're going to suffer with the most. So who knows? Thank you, Becca, for the community chat. Yes, if you've been here for a while. Have you been, you know, on your computer for a while? Definitely stretch, drink some water. I definitely needed some water. So yes, thank you, Becca. Gracias, gracias. Aha, so eating challenge. Then affect your game. Uh, there's a lot of different options in here. Some which, I, I, I never think I've tried all of them, right? Like one is to cover your eyes, have, um, have your hands in socks, have your screen flipped. So you can have one that affect you negatively, or you can have one that 
whoever donates gets to pick something of what you're playing, right? Things like picking a character, naming a character, or kind of forcing you to do a certain thing, or it's something that you can't do, right? So I feel like there's so many different options, and some of them can be more specific depending on the game you're playing. Uh, so there's a lot of different options. And if you are fundraising for a charity that crowd control can connect to and if it also has a game that you like so it's a bit specific but honestly there's a lot of different charities and games now in crowd control crowd control could crowd control can do wonders for you uh i i'm not gonna go you know over the tutorial of crowd control but i will share the link if people want to look into that so it's pretty much a way for people to immediately affect your game so for example i've done that with celeste that you know people donate certain amount and it triggers a monster like in game so it's a, a much more direct way for there to for people to donate and affect your game but it's a bit limited right it's not all games and not all charities right hand in socks yeah no again many of these and again there's probably even more right these are some that i've heard of um and then one that... Oh, and then this one is also free, right? I mean... Yeah. All of these are free, right? So when people were worried about the cost, the Affect Your Game is almost always free. I mean, if you want to buy something that can more easily, you know, cover your eyes, but, you know, you can use whatever. Uh, I mean, you have socks. <laughs> so, you know, this one can also... It's free. So, yeah, like, there are so many that are free in here. So also good to keep in mind if you are a bit constrained by, by price. And there's another category that I didn't really know where to put it, but I call it unique achievements because ultimately, in some cases, you can do something a bit different than everything else. So things like a Discord role, you can have a Discord role. If it's like a really big fundraiser that you want to have a Discord role for, you can have that. And if and if your community is one that, you know, fights for Discord roles, then that's a really good way to do it. Thank you, thank you for the follow. Uh, uh, Tris Vieira, Tris Vieira, Tris Vieira. Uh, welcome, welcome. Let me know, uh, uh, Tris, if, you know, you want to be called differently, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably be referring to you to by Tris, but again, if you prefer any other nickname, or if you want me to go by your full username, or if I mispronounce it, let me know. I'm happy to change that, but welcome, welcome. We're going over some information about fundraising for charity. If you missed anything, I'll save it in my bod. Uh, but yeah, right now we're going over the incentives. Ah, uh, Tris is good. Came in from Ah uh, Cafe Cultivar. Ah, uh, yes, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, I am a community manager of Cafe Cultivar. So that means that my role is focused towards the community as a whole. So, for example, I was not involved in any of the team-related stuff. Like, even if I wanted to apply to the team, I, like if I wanted to be part of the team, uh, I had to apply. For example. And I also try to, you know, do events for the community. So I did like a Fall Guys event in the past. Um, and honestly, to some degree, you know, this, this presentation was having Cafe Cultivar in mind. Because I feel like, you know, uh, Latina Heritage Month is coming up. And I feel like uh, maybe not everyone feels comfortable doing fundraisers. I wanted to put something out there. But I know, of course, that there's other different in in initiatives in so many other places about doing fundraisers. So, you know, I kind of made it, I made it for a lot of people, but I, I definitely wanted to, to help us, right? The Latino community uh, have more resources on knowing how to fundraise. And I felt I had the right knowledge to be able to put, put a presentation and a stream for that. Uh, but yes, welcome, welcome, Tris. Welcome, welcome. So we just went over, oh, we were talking about unique achievements and we went over the Discord, Discord role portion, but there's also a personalized drawing. Um, oh, I really want to get into fundraising. Oh, this is very helpful. Oh, I love to hear that, Tracy. And again, I, I talked, and I'll, at the end, I'll probably do a quick summary. And when I do my Twitch, when I, when I put, whenever I get to post my uh, bod, 
on YouTube. I'll make sure I do the chapter so that people can more easily, you know, skip stuff. And if, if they if they only want to have the information of the presentation, then they can just skip different stuff. Or if they want to skip the Spanish speaking section, then you know, I'll definitely do chapters by the way. So it's even more easy for people to access that. Um, but yes. Um, and yes, Tris and anyone else in chat that's joining later, if you have any questions, even if it's something that I've already covered, it doesn't matter. Like, feel free to ask by all means. Uh, but yes, glad it's being helpful. That, that That's the goal. <laughs> uh, but yes, the, the last thing I was going to mention about unique achievements, going back to the conversation, is personalized drawings. Sefi, thank you for the host. Yeah, thank you, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you all being here and just all the love for, for this. Um, because I was very nervous when I first started, <laughs> because I definitely know people that have had e that have had even more experience than myself. But I'm like, hey, I feel like I have enough experience to help others. So I appreciate all of you being here and all the support. Exactly. <laughs> no, really, thank you, Sefi. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, but yes, personalized drawings, right? Like I am no artist, but if you are on PC, you have paint for free and you can just have, you know, a personalized drawing if people donate. And again, ma again, many of the things I covered are free and something that's very important to, well, free already, assuming, right, that you have a PC and that you have other stuff, right? But many of these are, are free already, uh, which is, it's, it's, it's a good news that charity streams don't need to be expensive for you. They can, if you want to, you know, if you want, but they don't need to be. Excuse me. I <laughs> uh, thank you, Ale. <laughs> well, I mean, at least like I, I don't spend time drawing, but I do, you know, I, I do try my best. <laughs> Even if it's a Mimi, you know, um, uh, MS painting. But yeah, thank you, Ale. <laughs> and another one that's free, e exercise body. I've never tried that, but I, honestly, I feel like this is one that I'm gonna try because it could be really, really fun. Like, you can have, oh, if you donate $5, I'm gonna do a burpee, or, you know, if, it, and that could be really fun as well. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna involve, you know, maybe having, like, a bigger view of yourself so they can see you doing the exercise, but I feel like that could be really silly. Um, I'll probably actually do that at some point. I haven't done any of those. And name on body, another thing that, you know, if you, if you have, like, well, I guess it depends what you want to use to put it in your face, but, you know, you can just use your body in that sense as well. Ah, uh, zombie love the brain and the Pichika monster was uh, chef's kiss. Yeah, no, I, I was really happy with the drawings that I've done so far. And actually, another important thing about incentives that I forgot to add here is that if, if some incentives are gonna take longer, if some incentives are gonna take some time, make sure that you add the incent that th that you add next to the incentive. I you know end of stream. So for example, for personalized drawing. That's one that I've used before, but I don't want for me to, you know, be engaged on a game or on something, then someone redeeming that, and then I have to pause everything and spend some time drawing, right? Because I personally do like to, to you know, to be detailed with the drawing, like as detailed as I can. Uh, so that's also something to keep in mind. And, and Chad is going to understand, especially, for example, for this one, like the person will want to have the end result, right? I mean, they might like to see the process, but as long as you don't forget to actually send them the drawing, um, you don't necessarily need to do all of them on the spot when they donate. And I know that has helped me a lot to organize myself. Like it's something quick, like, you know, cover your eyes. Yeah, someone redeems it. I cover my eyes, put a timer and go for it. But something that I know might take a bit more time, definitely. And another thing that I completely forgot to include here that I was thinking about it later is, you know, use stuff that you have. Like, for example, I have, you know, my cats, Charles and Grace. And even though I have, you know, redemptions for people to see them, I sometimes off stream, I play with them with bubbles. So one of my incentives was to, you know, have one of my cats play with bubbles for X amount of, of time. And again, that, that one... In the future, I might do it for that it only happens at the end of stream. I think that time I didn't do it that way. Um, but yeah, again, just honestly, sometimes just look around the house and, you know, you have to kind of brainstorm and think about stuff to, to do for incentives. But again, this is kind of just some ideas so that you get started. Many which are free, important to recognize here. Um, it's, I'm gonna take actually a quick BRIB. 
uh, to finish my water and and yeah and then chill a little bit before I continue chatting because yeah this this just I can tell it's just chatting stream <laughs> because I've been chatting a lot um, so I'm gonna take a quick BRB and after the BRB I'm gonna go to the Spanish section entonces hablé sobre los incentivos en inglés voy a tomar un break rápido y después del break hablaré sobre los in incentivos en español so be right back Ok, espero que hayan tenido un buen break. I hope you all had a good, you know, break. Thank you, Ale, for the community self-check, definitely. Uh, make sure that, you know, you've stretched, you've drunk some water. Uh, you make yourself comfortable. Let me drink some water. Has there been chatting more than usual, as it's a just chatting stream? Hey Uni, thank you so much for the host. I really appreciate uh, you all, friends, for the support with hosting, being here, all of it. It's really great. It's very much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, everyone, really. Okay. 
Uh, now we're going to say the same thing but in Spanish. Este, ahora hablaré sobre los incentivos. Eh, which I don't think I even said in English, right? By, by incentive, what do I mean by incentive, right? I mean that whenever someone donates certain amount, then they get something immediately. Uh, and as I mentioned before with lo-fi, it can't be a like an actual item that you're giving them like it can't be um like a what's what's a good word yeah like it, it can't be like a game cure or anything like that directly because it does count as like as if you're selling something uh which uh you know in many places that that's count illegal if you're doing it through charity so it's just something to keep in mind uh, actually Ajá, entonces, ¿a qué me refiero con incentivo? Es lo que una persona obtiene después de haber eh, donado directamente, ¿no? Y es algo que... Es algo que... ¿qué? Ah, y hay muchas opciones, pero algo que no puedes hacer es que cuando alguien done reciba algo inmediatamente, porque eso se considera como si tú estuvieras vendiendo algo. Entonces, este... Es importante como... Y, y, y no está prohibido en muchos lugares si lo haces por medio de caridad entonces es algo, es algo importante que tener en, en mente um, so yeah, that's that Ajá, entonces, incentivos aquí puse muchos ejemplos este y, e intenté poner muchos que son gratis o que son de poco precio porque sé que una de las cosas que hablamos al principio es tener la preocupación de que va a ser costoso hacer un evento de caridad. Pero la verdad es que hay muchas formas de no hacerlo costoso e incluso gratis. El primer inciso es poner algo encima de tu stream. O un overlay, no sé cómo se diga en español. Pero por ejemplo... Ay, perdón. Eh, en mi comunidad existe como el meme o el chiste de Axomoli. ¿Qué es esto? <risa> Eh, voy a poner la información en chat La información solo la tengo en inglés eh, eh, Y esta información ah, Entonces en uno de mis streams Cuando alguien donaba cierta cantidad Ponía un axomoly en, en overlay Pero tú puedes ser Tan creativo con este inciso Puedes por ejemplo si estás Recaudando fondos en, en el mes de, de, de Orgullo Puedes pedir que si alguien dona, eligen una bandera de orgullo que les guste y las pones en tu stream. Eh, la variedad es impresionante. La verdad es que uno puede ser tan creativo con este inciso. Eh, un amigue puso que por cada... Creo que el amigue lo hizo con un, un, un spin the wheel, uno de al azar. Que a veces salía que ponía una imagen de... de, de una persona lesbiana, ¿no? Bueno, tú puedes ser súper creativo. Tan creativo como quieras ser. Este, Entonces, esa es una opción, ¿no? También opción de usar algo, ¿no? Ya sea un gorro, una barba, un sticker en la cara, que esto que expliqué antes, ¿no? Que estos pueden ser un poco más costosos. Pero, por ejemplo, yo en el sticker compré stickers, stickers de caritas sonrientes, ¿no? Que me costó muy barato y vienen varios. Entonces, esto va a durar para siempre. Entonces, si algún día... Si quiero hacer un stream y no tengo muchas ideas, puedo utilizar este siempre. Y siempre varía, ¿no? Porque la gente que vota elige qué color quiere y demás. Eh, también está el comer algo. Ten cuidado que no salgas del, de tu stream con un estómago... <risa> Un poco molesto, ¿no? Porque, por ejemplo, yo no voy a, nunca voy a elegir la opción de comer algo picoso como incentivo. Porque no, no, no aguanto. Bueno, sí aguanto, pero no, no quiero lastimar mi estómago, la verdad. Entonces, es importante tomar en cuenta que algunos de estos pueden ser más de lo que uno puede aguantar y hay que medirse. La verdad es que sí hay que medirse. Eh. Algo que no te guste, por ejemplo, a mí no me gustan eh, los olivos, entonces en mi fundraiser pasado elegí comer olivos y la verdad <ríe> sí sufrí mucho. Pero es algo que no daña a tu cuerpo, ¿no? Porque al final de cuentas es comida que simplemente no te gusta. Entonces yo creo que esta es una mejor opción que estos, pero te pongo todos los ejemplos para tenerlos ahí. Está la opción de afectar tu juego, que esta hay una variedad impresionante de, de opciones. 
taparte los ojos, usar calcetines en tus manos, voltear la pantalla, eh, prohibir algo por cierta cantidad de tiempo, cosas que te afecten negativamente, pero también dar la opción a tu comunidad o a la gente que vote a cambiar algo de una forma positiva, ¿no? Así como es elegir o nombrar un personaje, ¿no? En caso de que aplique. Y obviamente en este inciso hay más ejemplos dependiendo del juego, ¿no? De, si tú ya sabes qué juego vas a streamear, puedes pensar exactamente qué cosas se puede modificar de tu juego que, que embone al juego, ¿no? Por ejemplo, en Animal Crossing, una de las cosas que puedes hacer es, es ah, este... Si donas 5 dólares, tienes que usar una red a tu personaje, al personaje que quieras de tus eh, villagers, ¿no? O, bueno, el punto es que puedes ser muy creativo en esta parte. <risa> y en algunos casos, depende de qué organización estés este, recaudando fondos y también qué juego estés jugando... Puedes utilizar un, una plataforma que se llama Crowd Control. Eh, no voy a dar el tutorial de Crowd Control, pero sí es algo que tienes que eh, informarte. Pero es prácticamente una forma en la que alguien directamente afecte tu juego. Por ejemplo, yo he jugado Celeste y una de las opciones es que si alguien dona cierta cantidad de dinero, aparece un monstruo, ¿no? O voltea, literalmente voltea tu pantalla. O sea, el, el juego mismo termina siendo afectado. Entonces puede ser muy divertido. Pero sí, sí está limitado a ciertos juegos y a ciertas organizaciones. Eh, también tengo como opción logros especiales. Por ejemplo, les das a la gente que done un rol de Discord. Un dibujo personalizado. Que por ejemplo, si tienes una PC... Tienes Paint, entonces todo esto es gratis, eh, que es algo bueno, porque sé que uno se puede preocupar que sea costoso, pero no necesariamente. A esto no, no, tradu no traduje esta parte, ¿no? Pero bueno, y la otra opción es cosas que te hagan, ajá, que si alguien done, te haga que hagas ejercicio o afecte tu cuerpo, ¿no? Por ejemplo, que hagas lagartijas, sentadillas o que tengas que escribir el nombre en tu cuerpo. Entonces, estos son unos ejemplos de incentivos. Those were uh, examples of incentives, my friends. Now we're going to go to milestones, which uh, is similar. Because ultimately, any incentive can be a milestone, although milestones... What do I mean by milestone? Milestone is if you have a total goal of how much you want to fundraise... You should not own, you should, I would recommend to, depending on certain points in your fundraiser, if you get, if you collectively get to certain points, you should have something happening. So that's what I mean by milestone. Yeah, I just realized I, I see, even, even now I'm kind of assuming that people know what it means, but no, people might not know what it means, right? Because they're different. Milestone is collectively. When you get to a certain point of how much total money has been fundraised, something happens versus incentive, which is like if someone donates something, immediately something happens after that. So for milestones, as I mentioned, right, an incentive can be a milestone for a longer time. Like, for example, the beard one, I have it so that if in the past I've had it that like, oh, if we get to this milestone for the rest of the fundraiser, I'm going to be wearing the fake beard, for example. Or oh, instead of, you know, only using it for a certain amount of time or, you know, usually the incentive tends to be shorter than the milestone. But then other good ideas for milestones is special streams. So in the future, there's going to be special streams that you're going to do. Uh, there can, it can be like a music stream if you don't usually do that, art stream, and then a game that you usually don't play, which actually, in my case, uh, I have a... Uh, and I still owe this to the community. I, I, I already have planned when, uh, as long as I don't sign up to more indie game collective <laughs> games. Uh, but yes, I, I have already planned. So for example, in, in my case, one of my milestones was a Just Dance stream. So that's kind of more in the dancing category. And a scary stream, because I don't think I've ever played a scary game. So I've definitely used the special streams a lot. 
And then it also help another good thing about these special streams is that you know they don't interrupt immediately your fundraiser, something that you just have to plan in the future, which that can also be better so that you don't feel overwhelmed with what, everything that's happening in your charity streams. So good thing to keep in mind. Some of them might be might cost some money, especially things like if you want to do a cosplay or if you if you're buying a game like if you want to do a just dance stream but you don't have just dance or you know if you don't have a scary game and you have to buy it so some of these can be more expensive depending if you don't already own the game but not not all of them right you can do a drawing with paint you can do a full paint drawing like a mimi you know stream and yeah you can again you can be creative in all of these you can be creative in order to make it cheaper or in order to make it different. Um, then of course giveaways, you have a, a giveaway of giving a game, a postcard, an item, so many different options. And then an incentive. Ah, I already mentioned that. Oh, and then another good option, right, is to kind of let the chat as a whole participate in something so things like chat gets to tweet something for you I, I know I've seen that a lot or things like chat picks oh like chat picks what game you should play next stream and you can make a poll for that uh, so again and these you know you already have social media it's free right so yeah some options here Entonces voy a hablar sobre las metas que puedes poner en tus streams, en tus eh, eventos de caridad. ¿Y a qué me refiero a meta? Meta me refiero a que obviamente tú vas a tener una meta final de cuánto dinero quieres recolectar por completo. Pero para hacer que la gente done más, puedes poner diferentes como submetas que si se re recolecta cierta cantidad de dinero, algo sucede en tu stream o en futuros streams, que es lo que voy a hablar en, en un momento. Porque incentivo es lo que hay, lo que es algo que sucede en tu stream inmediatamente después de que alguien done, mientras que meta es de lo que se haya conseguido en su totalidad, ¿no? Entonces yo normalmente elijo cosas como tener un stream especial, porque es algo que en primera va, va, vas a planearlo después, entonces no va a interrumpir y hacer tu stream de calidad aún más caótico y porque hay mucha variedad no puedes hacer un stream de música de arte o incluso un juego que no normalmente juegas no ya sea de miedo o chistoso yo de hecho aún tengo que hacer un, un stream de un juego de miedo eh, de little nightmares y un juego ajá, y un stream de bailar por medio de just dance ahora si no tienes los juegos Es costoso, ¿no? Porque tienes que comprarlos. Pero no todos esos tienen que ser costosos. Puedes hacer uno de dibujar en MS Paint o uno de cantar. Ah, something that I forgot. In, in the music one, so I'm going to do it in both languages, is that for the music one, if you're using any type of music, if you stream it, you have to immediately, after stream, you have to, you know, eliminate your bot because, you know, you don't want to get uh, DMCA and you know you have to be careful with that on, on Twitch. Sí, una cosa que se me olvidó decir es que si haces de música, si vas a elegir cualquier música, tienes que inmediatamente borrar tu stream porque no quieres eh, no sé cómo se diga DMCA. Ah, porque en Twitch, al menos en Twitch no puedes poner cualquier música en tus streams, entonces si quieres hacer algo así tienes que borrar el bot. Um, so yeah, and and again like if you if you currently you know look up on twitch just dance like there's gonna be people doing just dance uh oh and, and que por lupo, hey welcome welcome just in case twitch is supposedly starting to do live strikes oh from what i heard now I go back to lurking oh no 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 that's actually really good thank you uh que por lupo for that yeah so actually maybe maybe we should eliminate the music if twitch is doing live strikes Ooh. Oh, I have my Just Dance stream. I might change it. If you're saying that, I might do like a double scary stream because I feel like my community would like, I mean, I feel like you all might like more. Um, I say my community because I know, I know not everyone is currently in chat, uh, but I feel like, you know, some of you might prefer double scary than 
dancing and scary. I mean, I prefer dancing and scary. <laughs> so maybe I should do that. No, but thank you. Yeah, so maybe music, not anymore, if Twitch is being much more diligent with um, strikes. Música capaz ya hay que eliminar porque Twitch está siendo más este, meticuloso en cuanto a investigar quiénes están utilizando contenido fuera de... Eh, contenido prohibido en el sentido de que no puedes poner cualquier música en stream. Ah, oh, ya, yeah, we love just that stream, so... <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't had one in a while, but I, I will need to keep in mind what um, Kepo Lupo said. But again, just dance stream is a game, so... Uh, ¿Podría una carta de agradecimiento ser una meta para los que donen una cantidad mayor? Okay, so this is, this is an important question uh, that actually... It, it's interesting because many people have asked this and it's really important. Uh, so I'm going to repeat it again because it's really important. So... You cannot... So you cannot directly give something to the viewer if they donate something. Because that counts as selling and, uh, you know, ultimately it can, what's the word? It can be illegal. So you can do things like giveaways and raffles, but not give something if they donate directly, right? Because, so, like, so it can be a goal, but, you know, you will need to do a raffle, right? Like, you can't have an incentive be that. And so, no, o sea, no puedes tener como... Lo, lo que dije antes, ¿no? Que no puedes tener como incentivo que alguien gane directamente después de donar algo. Eh, tiene que ser por medio de un raffle o de un giveaway. Sí, eso es, eso es importante. No, good question, Tris. Because um, uh, from, from someone... Actually, I'm going to do another shout out uh, to Ellie. Joy Panic. Uh, she's the founder of a Twitch team that I am part of called Cosmic Hearts. And, you know, she she's... She knows so much about fundraising that, you know, she even made a team focused on fundraising. Uh, and, I, and I learned so much from her. And of course, ultimately, many people from Cosmic Cars, I am going to do a shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, this is the, the information that I said comes from Ellie. So if Ellie says it, it's true <laughs> with fundraising because she's so knowledgeable and has, has years of experience. And yes, yeah, so much knowledge on that. Uh, but yes, no, good, good question, Therese. Good, good question. Uh, hey panda how are you doing oh yeah this is the perfect day to say oh yeah <laughs> thank you for donating thank you for the subscription panda 15 months 15 months Woo. oh yeah oh yeah panda <laughs> como estas welcome welcome panda hope you're having a great day oh ya verás <laughs> I E or L's in spanish but welcome welcome panda we were just chatting about our the goals in fundraising Um, hablé sobre giveaway, stream especial Y al final de cuentas cualquier incentivo puede ser una meta Siempre y cuando que dure más tiempo, ¿no? Por ejemplo, el de la barba Yo he hecho metas que Utilizar una barba hasta cierta cantidad En vez de que sea Utiliza una barba por 5 minutos Hago Si llegamos a cierta cantidad de dinero en mi stream Voy a utilizar una barba falsa por el transcurso de mis streams de esta organización. Oh no, also sorry for, for the little mistakes with my Spanish. It's been a minute since. No, 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 nothing to apologize, Tris. Like, I, you know, I've been, I live in the US for a long time and I still make mistakes in English. <laughs> I love that Ale said that this gift now has sound and it makes me so happy. Let's go! <laughs> Hi Panda! I love I love all the chaos. Welcome, welcome, friend. Uh, but yes, uh <laughs> Yes, no, we like to be chaotic thing. Yeah, we have actually a lot of fun redemptions. People want to look at it like uh, with their points. Oh my god, that crab is amazing. <laughs> That's such a good emote idea. I love it, Tris. <laughs> Uh, but yes, welcome, welcome everyone. Yes, uh, but yes, good questions and nothing to apologize about anything. <laughs> That that's the TLDR. 
Hi, on the charity front, uh, we just visited the cow. You all supported with your stuff. Hi, uh, Elliot. Oh my God, Elliot. I love that name. Um, that's a great name for a cow. Oh, that's great, Panda. I love to hear that. Yeah, because Panda, uh, like myself, actually, all the money that we get through Twitch, we donate to charity. So, you know, that that's that type of fundraiser doesn't really fit in this. I mean, it's different, right? It's just, you know, uh, you donating money. Oh, but I love that Panda. Oh, Elliot. I'm so glad Elliot is doing well. <laughs> Happy to hear that. He estaba explicando, no? Um, yeah, it's Unity Farm. Yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. Some hype for that. Some hype for that. <laughs> estaba explicando que. Bueno, de nuestro amigo Panda, ¿no? Que él también hace. Eh, también dona su dinero de Twitch a diferentes organizaciones. Y nos estaba contando de la vaca Elliot. <laughs> uh, exactly, all the love. Uh, but yes, just. Solo para terminar rápido con las metas. E incentivos. Y también hacer que el chat participe, ¿no? Que el chat. Eh, escriba un tweet para ti o que el chat elija qué stream vas a hacer en el futuro y demás, ¿no? Como opciones. Ok, so now we're gonna talk about pricing. Hey, Katie, welcome, welcome, friend. How are you doing? La vaca Elliot. <laughs> That's amazing. La vaca Elliot. See, no, we have to have a vaca Lola song, but for the vaca Elliot. <laughs> I feel like if someone is able to edit, um, edit, you know, music, they should do a, a la vaca Elliot, la vaca Elliot. <laughs> oh, how are you? Doing well, Katie. Thanks, thanks. We were just going to chat about how to price stuff, right? Because one is to have an idea of what different incentives and milestones you want in your charity fundraiser. But then also, how, how much are you going to price, right? Which that can take some time to figuring stuff out, honestly. I will say though, in Tiltify, a main main goal is a hot the least amount of money you can put for your main goal is a hundred dollars. Which honestly, that can be like a lot. I know sometimes like I know I do some fundraisers that it's like I don't I don't really want to make my community feel that they have to get to that goal. So honestly, uh if it's your honestly well if it's your first time doing a fundraiser it's gonna be really hard to know what's a good goal and that's what it is i mean even for me it's sometimes hard because i mean it kind of feels weird like you, you don't want to like i don't know you just don't want to pressure anyone and that's why again it's so important to remember that besides raising money you're raising awareness and then you know you feel less worried about you know your goals and anything but you have to have them ultimately right like it, it is what it is um, so this is where the milestones can help, right? Because if you don't feel, if you feel a hundred is too much, then you can have some milestones that kind of emphasize that this is not really what you want necessarily. And that ultimately you just want to have some, some hype about getting different milestones. Uh, Panda jumps out from behind TV to try to jump scare Katie. Oh my God. Oh, for Katie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I love it. Uh, but yes, anyhow, so you something to keep in mind that Tiltify does have a minimum amount. Um, but ac actually, before even going to milestones, I'll go over incentives. So I definitely suggest that regardless of how... Well, if you're really big, if you're a really big streamer that, you know, can is confident that, you know, people will be able to support... Uh, actually, it, it has nothing to do with how big or small you are as a streamer. Just like if you think your community um, might donate higher quantities and maybe not. But I think almost always you should have an any amount. So regardless of how much they donate, something happens. So I usually like to do the sticker one for that or something that's visual so that, you know, they can so that people can don that donate can see their partic participation in stream. I really like that. And then, you know, have small increases in between. And again, it depends. It's something that honestly you just have to test because it, it varies by community and it varies by so many things. Definitely look at how other people are, have done their incentives to have an idea. But, you know, someone might 
have their drawing redemption 10 bucks someone might have five bucks someone might have 50 bucks like it can really vary so it's just something that you know you, you're gonna have to more or less figure it out and it's something that you're always learning honestly like i know i always i sometimes overthink about how i should do my incentives um and for example something that i like to do is to have an incentive that's pricey but that includes all other incentives right because the way i do my incentives is that like it each depending like it's not that you know if you donate five dollars a happens and then if you donate ten dollars both a and b happens no 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 like each incentive is distinct but then i have a more expensive incentive which includes all incentives at once which is expensive but the way i do the math is that it's cheaper than if you do each incentive individually so that's kind of like a get all in one donation cheap thing uh, which I, I, I personally like that idea. If people really want to donate and create chaos with one donation, that's the way to go. Um, but yeah, definitely something that you're going to need to test, though. Ah, yes, and Panda says about, oh, the happy birthday to Katie. Oh my god, like Katie gets scared with that. And yes, happy International Cat Day, everyone. Heck yeah. Today is International Cat Day. <laughs> And I know that that will mean that I'm going to bring Charles at the end of stream. You know, it's going to be a free Steel Cats redemption because today we're showing all the live to our beautiful cats. Um, so heck yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Panda, for a really important reminder. <laughs> uh, and then with milestones, going with the milestones portion, going quickly back to, to what I was talking about. So, oh, <laughs> oh my God, Panda, you're still trying to steal the cats. Oh. Almost. <laughs> that was good, though. <laughs> so definitely, I think there's two, two approaches. Either have the milestones equally spread it. So actually, when I showed my Tiltify one, actually, I don't think it's here. Uh, Tiltify. Actually, yeah, I, I should show one for example so people can see. So I have every 25 bucks, something happens. So it's equally spread it out. Um, and then for example, with rewards. Uh, so for example, something that I did is that like I made, I made my rewards cheaper than before because I ended up extending it. So that's another thing you can think about. Like if you want, if you ended up extending it more than you expected, you can also be like, oh, now they're cheaper, right? So then people can, can still donate even if it's a fundraiser you've already fundraised for. Um, but yeah, so I have them equally spread it. So I, and every $25 in my case. And again, it varies. It's something you're gonna need to test and you're gonna make mistakes straight up. Like there's no way to avoid the mistakes. So something to keep in mind. Oh, Panda, you're doing a haiku. Didn't get caught. Woo. But here still is a haiku. And the owl says who. Oh my god, I love it, Panda. Thank you for that. Actually, do I have an... I think I have an owl. Hype read. I do have an owl emote. <coughs> Heck yeah. should drink more water. Um, so yeah, that's information on milestones. And also consider Mimi ones. Like you can just have one if, if they reach 69, then something Mimi happens or 420, you know, you can be creative on that as well, if you want. And then another thing, have reach goals in advance, especially in the beginning when you don't know if this is too high or too low, have reach goals. Because honestly, you never know. And sometimes like, I, like, no kidding i would always have reach goals but there was one stream one charity fundraiser that honestly i thought like we were it's, it's not gonna do we were not gonna do that great because you know i felt like we had a lot of charity streams next to each other so i'm like you know what i'm just not gonna have reach goals in advance because i don't want to like pressure my community but then of course that one fundraiser that i don't have reach goals suddenly boom like <laughs> there was a lot of donations you know happening um and then I like I had to think on the spot, right? And just to make yourself, you know, need like to have yourself as much organized as possible with respect to your charity streams, have your reach goals in advance, 
even if you think you're not gonna make it and even have one uh, like a a really really high one that like you know it's not gonna happen but you just have there in case someone just like bumps into your stream and donates a bunch of money like just to have that prepared huge recommendation Ok, ahora en español, entonces, ahora vamos a hablar sobre el precio, porque al final de cuentas estos incentivos y metas deben de tener un precio. Entonces, como meta principal en Tiltify, que de hecho no sé si cambia, actually, I think depending on the charity, I think depending on the charity's currency, the maximum amount is 100 of that currency. It might vary by charity, but this is a standard. Creo que depende de la caridad. Pero como estándar, casi todas las caridades ponen como mínimo... Perdón, perdón. 100 dólares americanos de Estados Unidos. Entonces, es algo que tomar en cuenta, ¿no? Si crees que es mucho, puedes como hacer notar en tus metas, ¿no? Que tal vez ese no es tu meta final y que tal vez tu meta final sea antes. Y es algo que va a ser muy difícil calcul calcular saber qué es la mejor meta. Hoy en día yo también cada vez que hago un charity event le, 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 le calculo más o menos, ¿no? Y puede variar. Entonces es importante recordar que la meta, que, que bueno, que el propósito de por qué haces streams de caridad en parte es para recolectar dinero, pero también para dar a conocer diferentes organizaciones, ¿no? Y esa parte es igual de importante que, que llegar a una meta entonces entonces teniendo eso en mente creo que te puede ayudar a no presionarte tanto de que si pones un valor muy grande o muy pequeño y demás en cuanto a incentivos yo siempre tengo un incentivo de sin importar cuánto dones algo pasa eh, y fuera de eso tengo incentivo eh, si alguien dona no sé 20 dólares tengo diferentes incentivos si es 5, 10, 15 o 20 a fuerzas, sin importar cuánto dones tienes de cualquier cantidad, pero de esas otras opciones, tú tienes que elegir una dependiendo de cuánto dones. Puedes elegir y entre más dones, más opciones tienes para elegir. No sé si se, se entendió eso. O sea, yo no tengo una opción. O sea, no es que si alguien dona 5 dólares, sucede cosa A. Y luego si alguien dona 10 dólares, sucede cosa A y una cosa B. No, 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 no. Yo siempre lo tengo muy separado. Pero entonces lo que yo hago es que tengo una opción que es la más costosa, pero que si alguien dona esa cantidad, todos los demás incentivos suceden al mismo tiempo. Y normalmente lo que hago es que hago que esa opción sea más barata que la suma de todos los demás. No es como una opción en descuento, por así decirlo. Eh... Ajá. Y en cuanto a metas, lo que te recomiendo es o que tengas las metas... Que tengas muchas metas al final, porque al principio la gente va a estar donando por los incentivos en sí. Y al final como que tienes que motivar a la gente a seguir donando para llegar a la meta. O tenerlas separadas equitativamente, que yo normalmente uso esa opción. E insisto, va a variar mucho de tu, de tu comunidad y es algo que vas a tener que estar probando. Pero por ejemplo yo, cada 25 dólares hay una diferente meta. De hecho, voy a volver a poner el link en el chat. Ahorita lo pongo. Eh... Ah, también puedes tener metas chistosas, ¿no? Esa es otra opción. Y también, sin importar qué tan grande o pequeño sea tu stream, te recomiendo que tengas metas preparadas en antemano. O sea, metas más grandes que tu meta final. Porque uno nunca sabe, puede llegar a alguien que done mucha cantidad de dinero y no tienes ninguna meta planeada, entonces sí te recomiendo tener una. En particular que tengas una muy, muy, muy alta para que en caso de que algo extremadamente inesperado suceda y donen mucho dinero, tengas algo planeado, ¿no? Um, muy bien. We're almost done, actually. Yeah, this was, this was the three hours. I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be a shorter stream. <laughs> But no, I'm glad. That means that I did have a lot to say, which is good. So additional tips, you know, kind of like the final tips to keep in mind. Definitely customize Tiltify campaigns. ¿Cuánto cuesta hielo? Ice? Hmm. 
Hmm. Wait, am I? I feel like I'm missing the pawn panda. I want to know. <laughs> oh no, Trenton may have killed it. Oh no, oh god. <laughs> oh god, oh god, panda. <laughs> You can double check with Ale or someone else so that they can help you. Or or with us, you know, in here. But I don't know if you wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I appreciate you, Panda though. Thank you for for the for the attempt. I mean, honestly, it's interesting because doing jokes in a different language is, is very difficult. Cuanto cuesta bonito? Yeah, like pretty? Bonito means pretty. Nailed it. Heck yeah! Hype, hype! <laughs> Aww. Heck yeah. <laughs> love it, Panda. I, I love I love the, the Spanish. The, 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 the accent and the question mark is well placed because that's an article cool thing about Spanish that you know you have like the double question marks. But anyhow, I'll, I'll go I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go back with the additional tips. Um, so yeah. A kick translate, all good. All good, Panda, no worries. So definitely you can customize your Tiltify campaign by adding images. And actually you were you were able to see that in my in my most recent one. I have images for the rewards, you know, that I find online or that I create. Even in my actual fundraiser, I have an image. I need to do zoom. I add my little, you know, uh, Gloria in the image uh, and things like that. Uh, so definitely personalize it. And actually, now I'm going to quickly answer the question in chat because, yes. Um, Therese asks a really good question. I have a question about choosing the charity. I don't live in the US and I feel like most charities that are on Tiltify are US based or support something in the US. That is very true that most of them are US based, but I will say not all of them. Um, I was surprised actually when we fundraised for Fondo Semillas, I, I actually checked of the ones we fundraise if there's anyone to divide and fondo semillas which is a mexican-based charity was in teltify i feel like each time i've noticed i mean last time i checked was you know what a year ago you know of how many mexican orgs there were but they've been adding more from other countries so honestly if you go to teltify oops um let me just open teltify if you go to Tiltify directly, uh, I think like even if you search like Mexico, for example, it can like it does like a, a more a smarter search of like even though the, you know the cause doesn't say you know Mexico, it's it can still find like organizations that are from Mex Mexico. Like for example, it gets better Mexico. That's one that we fundraised in the past. Um, Fondo Semillas, see this is this is where I found it, like, oh, Fondo Semillas. Um, so my first invitation is to directly type the country that you want to fundraise for threes in the Tiltify main page. And you'll be able to find actually more causes than you realize. However, and actually this is something that I might look into doing more. Uh, but if you have a charity in mind that you don't see it being in Tiltify, you could actually reach out to the organization, you know, through email and be like, hey, I'm a streamer and I would love to fundraise money for your organization. However, um, I saw that you aren't on Tiltify and it would facilitate me fundraising for your charity. If you're on Tiltify, would you consider signing up, right? So actually that's another good, like, you could reach out to the organizations and they would my, they would love it honestly because for example something that i know i've done in the past with some friends is that like we use other medium to donate but you know there's it, it, it doesn't go directly there's like somewhere in between whether that be you know paypal but i honestly like looking back i don't know if i would recommend it because it almost puts you at the responsibility 
and I mean, I I do I, I I definitely do it for things like my the Twitch money because I mean this is money that like I want to put somewhere into it, and you know I try to show as much as possible that I did donate, but so I mean that's a separate case, right? But if you want to do like a big event, I wouldn't. I mean. If there's no other option, you know, you like sure. But I think looking back, you know, at fundraisers that we've done before, I would recommend uh, using um, something else. Yeah, or what, what Panda says, right? Uh, and yeah, and, and for example, that I think that works if you don't have like incentives because ultimately, right? Like if you do something like that, you might need to like keep an eye of like, like how are you gonna tell how much people donated? And for example, what we used in the past when we did Milagros Caninos was uh, Kofi, Kofi actually. We have like a Kofi account for a given fundraiser, in, in our case, Milagros Caninos. And then we make sure that, you know, we took pictures of the donation going through. Of course, you know, covering personal information, right? So, you know, you have to also be very safe on that when you do it this way. But there's a lot of integrations that you lose if you do it that way, right? So for things like, you know, what Panda and I do, that is, you know, we donate our money to charity and there's no incentives, you know, it's just, I mean, the incentives, I guess, is people getting emotes and things like that, right? Like all the incent all the benefits you get by subscribing. Um, yeah, actually, that's a, that's a great uh, suggestion, Panda. I found the best way is to email them beforehand so they know and no one thinks you're doing it in their name but not donating. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, Panda. I know I've done it for many of them that you know, might have like a specific, um, if, if I can find the link directly or if it's, it's an organization that might not receive that many donations, like Ajolotitlan, the one that we fundraised for last time, which was an actual museum in Mexico, I reached out to them like, hey, is it possible for me to donate through my Twitch community and so, so on and so forth. And yeah, I mean, they're going to say yes, right, because it's ultimately helping them. Like as Opanda says, like the orcs that are, aren't on a site, I have a combo with prior to using their name, so they know, and I let them know I am using something from their press kit. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, next, actually, even things like the press kit, that's a really good idea, uh, Panda. Why well, don't let them know so much as permission? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And yeah, you have to also be mindful about things like that, you know, of being able to use uh, their stuff and all of that. Exactly, and they've always been cool with it. And yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised that they would be totally cool with, with you think things, things like that. Uh, so I hope that answered your question, Tris. And thank you so much, Panda, for also giving your insight on that. And yeah, by the way, anyone can give any insight like what Panda did, like what our good friend Panda did. Um, but yeah, heck yeah. Some love for that. Oh, yes, it did. Thank you. No, of course, of course. Thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you for asking. I really appreciate that. Uh, you asking. Um, but yes, customize Siltify campaign. Then also in Twitch, there's a charity tag that, for example, I always have that tag because I all the money that goes through Twitch goes to charity. But you know, when you set up which tags you want to put on on Twitch, there is a charity tag. And there, sometimes there might be tags of an event, so definitely look look at that. And also include the word charity in your st stream title. Again, all of this for discoverability purposes, so people can more easily find your stream. And then actually, this is very related to what Panda said, right? Like another thing is that to, beyond the Tiltify overlays, you can totally add more overlays of the organization itself. So things like logos, videos, alerts, for example, what I would do in my fundraisers is that in the be right back screen currently i have my cats right but if i have a fundraiser i put a video of that fundraiser so that if people you know if i'm away they can still be informed about what i'm fundraising for and very very important how will people know that you're fundraising if you don't promote it right you have to promote the event on your socials on stream by you know having a title that can make it aware uh, that you are fundraising uh, by your in your Discord channel. So many you have to promote it as much as you can, and 
together with promoting the event you have to promote the donation link right especially if you have people that might be shy to be perceived about donating and want to donate anonymously like don't force them to need to use the exclamation mark donate command have them in your overlays as a you know qr code on your extensions on your social media so definitely have to you have to spread as much as possible yeah and some orgs have pre-made packages too yeah i know some some of the ones that i worked with have some pre-made packages to help streamers so definitely exactly yes some of them have very specific rules covering use of their logo some don't want their main logo used for fundraising yeah thank you panda Th these are really good advice as well i know and panda i just threw my coffee mug on the desk oh no i feel like this is this is a oh no moment i'm so sorry ali I hope, I hope, I hope it's all good. <laughs> oh no. Oh, empanada. Empanada is Alice's cat, uh, by the way. Well, one of um, her two cats. But yes, thank you everyone for the information. Exactly. <laughs> Entonces, eh, eh, la última sección son unos tips. No, no tipos, tips. Uh, Ignora la O. Tips adicionales. Thank you so much for the follow! Wait. Wait, let me check something. Am I... Am I... Wait. Okay, no, I got confused. Thank you so much for the follow, oh, Pika Chica. Gracias por el follow. Bienvenido, bienvenide. Welcome, welcome. Let me know if you want to be called differently. Uh, I can call you Pika if you want, but if you go by a different, you know, nickname or by your full username, let me know. But welcome, welcome. I write the empanada is such a cute name. I know, we, we love empanada. We stand empanada. Empanada is such a cute name, actually. Let me do something before I forget. There you go. I'll be right back in a bit. Wanted to stop by. Oh, yes, no, no, no worries. Uh, I wanted to stop by for a bit as the topic is near and dear to my heart. No, and Panda, honestly, like, I, I want to say, for example, I didn't know what to do for... Uh, what's the word? I am fortunate enough that I'm in the position that I don't need the money that I gained through Twitch. And I wanted to do something with it. Uh, that wasn't me keeping it and panda was actually the one that uh, i first met who would donate uh, his money from twitch to charity and i know that that just took to me you know stay with me and i'm like hey i can totally do this as well which then led me to actually do charity events differently and things like that Hi, Pika. Yes, please call me Pika. I go by she and her pronouns. I am from the Café Cultivar. Hi, and I love that. Welcome, welcome, Pika, that you're from Café Cultivar. Yeah, we have a lot of Café Cultivar members. And as I said before, I mean, I did do this event thinking, I mean, thinking about so many people, mostly the Latine community, because Latine Heritage Month is coming soon. And I know, you know, Café Cultivar has a charity, has charity streams in place, you know, planned. And I know other people are doing different charities and I feel like it can be very easy to feel intimidated about doing uh, charity fundraisers. Yeah, like Lo-Fi actually. Lo-Fi, feel free to share your link. Uh, you should be able to as your VIP now. Uh, but yes, Lo-Fi and um, I Geeked Out are doing a fundraiser and we have so many different fundraisers to help the Latino community. And if you feel like you want to participate but feel a bit too intimidated, this is kind of to help you all. And and the great thing about it is that it, it, it can be used for any streams in the future. Um, share my link, don't mind if I do. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you, um, Daniel. Uh, gracias, gracias. So, yes, there's a lot of different, um, you know, events going on. And I want to make sure people have the knowledge of how to do fundraising. But, yes. Ah, yes, fellow Pika. Exactly, we have... Ale, Pichica, Monster, that, you know, sometimes goes by uh, Pika, and then Pika Chica, that goes by Pika. I love it. And thank you, thank you, Lofi, for sharing the links. So, yes, I did that. I did, And again, if people are joining, you know, past when I started and, you know, are worried about missing 
the beginning i'm gonna put everything on youtube with chapters so that people can more easily see different sections and things like that uh but yeah uh but yes we'll we're actually really close to the end estamos muy cerca del final ahorita estoy hablando sobre tips adicionales el primer tip es personalizar tu campaña de tiltify ya sea con imágenes con el nombre con el mensaje de hecho aquí yo mostré como tengo diferentes imágenes dependiendo de cuánto donen y demás entonces def definitivamente personaliza tu campaña lo más que puedas este también hay un tag en Twitch eh, que es Charity, Caridad. Entonces definitivamente es algo que puedes considerar para ponerlo en tu stream. Para que sea más fácil que otras personas descubran tu, eh, tu evento de caridad. Y también a veces hay tags del, del evento tal cual. Hay eventos que son lo suficientemente grandes que puedes encontrar tags al respecto. Eh, y también pon charity slash caridad en tu título. Insisto, todo es, este tip es para ayudar a que tu stream sea descubierto por otras personas. Otra, otro tip es que pongas información de la caridad en el overlay. Puedes poner más logos, puedes poner videos. Por ejemplo, yo en mi Be Right Back tengo el video de mis gatitos. Entonces, cuando yo hago un stream de caridad, pongo el video de la organización. Eh, como dijo nuestro muy buen amigo Panda, eh, algunas eh, organizaciones capaz si ya tienen como algo prediseñado para streamers para que elijan esos logos en particular y videos. Entonces, cuando tengas duda, definitivamente puedes acercarte a la organización. Les va a dar mucho gusto que tú estés eh, recordando, ayudándolos, consiguiendo dinero y ayudando a informar a otras personas sobre su, su organización. Entonces, si tú te pones en contacto con la organización, si tienes duda, siempre va a ser una respuesta positiva. Bueno, espero, ¿no? Porque en, en, mi, en mi experiencia sí lo ha sido, pero claro, puede haber e excepciones. Y lo más importante, la gente no va a poder donar ni aprender de tu evento si no lo promueves. Entonces, lo tienes que promover en tus redes sociales, en tu servidor de Discord, en donde puedas. Y cuando tú promuevas el evento, no olvides también promo promover el link para donar, ¿no? Porque si no, la gente no va a saber cómo donar. Entonces, es algo que yo cometía el error antes. Entonces, tienes que promover el evento y el link para que la gente pueda donar. Oh my God, I can't believe it's been three hours. <laughs> I can't believe it was three hours. I thought it was going to be like an hour long, but no, it was three hours. No puedo creer que fue tres horas, pero sí, no, efectivamente. Pensé que iba a ser una hora. Yeah, no, this was wow. This was, I guess I did have a lot to say. Uh, al final sí tenía mucho que decir. So just thank you everyone so much for being here. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask at any point. Like you can DM me honestly on Twitter, and I'm happy to help. Tenocosaur just subscribed. Thank you for Twitter donating link. to charity. Tenuki, thank you so much for the subscription. I appreciate Bubba you, Bulbasaur. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Tenuki. Welcome, welcome. I hope you've been doing great, Tenuki. Yeah, I hope everyone has been doing great, or else, as we like to say here. Ah, uh, yes, thank you so much for the info. I caught only an hour of it, but we'll be watching the bot. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad this is helpful. And again, in the bot, I'll make sure I put different chapters so that, you know, because I have a whole presentation here, right? I have like a full presentation going on with different sections. So, you know, if you just want to have like a high level explanation, you can just go at that section, see the, the image and then write notes. But if there's a specific section that you want the details of, then, you know, you can kind of watch it all fully. Um, so I'll post in Cafe Cultivar and in all discourse and in all socials once I have the bot finished because I have to not only download it, but do the chapter thing. Uh, so it might take a bit longer than, you know, just me uploading it. Uh, but I'll try to have it by maybe Thursday, by this week for sure, by this week. Uh, before the weekend uh, ideally but I, I i you know i work so maybe i won't but yeah by this week for sure 
I can't wait for it. That makes me so happy because that makes me so happy. And I'll try to make it as informative as possible. And that's also why I made a presentation so that like sometimes I get distracted or whatever. So at least it's always informative at all times. Um, I also eliminated the closed caption and I am only using the closed caption from Twitch because when I do bilingual streams, my poor, you know, poor pixel chat gets so confused about what to do. So I didn't want to confuse people like, wait, what is, what are they saying? Because it can only recognize English. So it gets really confused with Spanish, but the closed caption from Google, I, mean, I think it's a, I think it just Google Translate. I think that one can recognize if it's a new language. Um, so FYI. Oh, Pika, I always wanted to do a cherry stream, but I feel so wrong. No, 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 yes. I, I hope you, you learn a lot from the bot because in the beginning of the bot, I explained, you know, why you should fundraise as well as how to deal with, with the overwhelming part because it can be overwhelming, but no, 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 no. You should totally try it because it has so many benefits and you can very easily eliminate things that might be worrying for you. Um, and then Tiltify is such a great tool to use. And then there's so many extensions, integrations within Tiltify. Uh, so yes, Pika, definitely, if you already have a, you know, a charity from Brazil, immediately, you know, send them a message, reach out to them uh, in advance so that hopefully they can better, you know, integrate their, you know, their organization in Tiltify. Um, but it's actually covered a lot of stuff. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope you, you get to learn more information, but yeah, so much, so much stuff. Um, and we chatted a lot. Yeah, I'm like, oh, probably it's going to be an hour because, you know, there's 25 slides. Again, I'm repeating myself, but no, I mean, I had a lot to say per each slide. Um, but yes, that was the, the video. <laughs>